Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Paranormal Guys. We're glad you're here. The chat is open. I'm about to open up the toll-free line, and we'll have the phone lines going. It's one 888 yergz on your phone pad. That's one 888 yergz on your phone pad. And let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, from coast to coast and around the world, you're listening to the Sport Cat Show. That's <laughs> inside joke. All right. Well, let's see. I've got Miss Cheyenne and Miss Dina here with me. How are you, young lady? Fabulous. How are you? Well, I'm great. I'm great. What do you say we bring our first guest out? He is the author of a book that we were just actually chatting about. And I'm personally looking forward to reading it because, well, I'm a science fiction geek. And a comic book geek too, so just a geek. Yeah. geek. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm just a geek, so yeah, you're right. If I can figure out which button to push, there we go. <laughs> I got two buttons here tonight. Oh, George, how are you? Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me on. This is great. It's great to be here. Great yeah. to have you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mm-hmm. We get the chat open, the phone lines going, everything's good. Okay. I- pushed all the right buttons so george welcome to the show um we were talking earlier you're a dc native um and that uh you've got a brand new book out well i guess it's been out for a couple months now and you got its follow-up book is coming out so it's uh it sounds kind of interesting with a uh, intergalactic private investigator tell us about it sure yeah so it's called eugene j mcgillicuddy's alien detective agency so the lead character eugene mcgillicuddy He has the uh, very odd psychic ability to answer any question that someone asks of him. So he is trying to hide, though. He's always concerned that someone's going to put him in a Petri dish and try to dice his brain up and say, how did that work? So he he decided to try to hide in plain sight by being a detective because who gets asked tough questions? Detectives. So he has... um, Yes, so he is trying to, to navigate his way through pretending to be a detective by leveraging his psychic ability to answer any question that anybody asks of him. So, You're cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. What, was your, what was your influence in writing this? I mean, was it just something that kind of like came up to you or is it just authors you follow or how did you? Sure. So that's for, a setup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I, you know, generally speaking, I'm weird. So I have, you know, <laughs> that was a weird idea. So welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I, I found my people. Um, so yeah, I, I grew up reading, you know, hard science fiction like Isaac Asimov and Robert Heinlein. But then I also got introduced into some of the British science fiction out there. You know, mm. Douglas Adams and you know, of course, Terry Pratchett, Mary Gentle. And mm-hmm. I, I read some of that stuff and it's sort of, so there's like this confluence of where these, these, this, you know, hard science fiction and then this comedy science fiction and this weird science fiction all kind of glommed itself together. Yeah. And I thought, well, it'd be kind of neat if there was a detective that was like, you know, could just answer any questions somebody asked of him. So I thought that was like, you know, of course, you know, Dirk Gently's a Tulsa detective agency and his Shaker's Guide to the Galaxy, you know, super big fans of those series, both, you know, the TV shows, the books, there was actually a radio show. Um, there was actually a PBS special for Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy that came out a very long time ago, and it was brilliant, and I absolutely loved it. Sure. So I guess all of that sort of like came together as this like avalanche of insanity and made me think, hey, this might be a cool idea. So, you know, I, I just played with that idea for a good five, six, seven, eight years, and then fortunately I was fortunate enough for a group to say, hey, this is kind of cool. Let's go ahead and give it a shot and and, and put it out there so it, it is out there in the world. Very cool. Very cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I like that. Uh, it's a unique idea. So I, yeah. especially when you get, uh, you know, the paranormal wrapped around into ET. So 
That's right. Yeah. You know, I mean, hey, ET can have paranormal too, right? There's no risk. Sure. To you can have they're, they're part of the paranormal. Uh, probably the, the the paranormal <laughs> ET. Yeah, probably. <laughs> When uh, when you were writing it, how long did it take you to get everything together? You said it took you what five years to get so, it together. Yeah. You started rolling the ID. So I actually wrote a couple of short stories around this idea, and I was sort of playing with that. They didn't really work functionally well. And then I, you know, I wrote this book. I actually participated. So Twitter used to have this like um, Twitter pitch contests where you could you know pitch yourself to a but uh, and also some uh, different you know websites used to have this where you could pitch your book and possibly get a mentor that would help you like craft it and mold it. Um, I didn't actually get a mentor, but I did get some good advice <laughs> along the way, you know. And so and it was really great advice, and I took that and then I rewrote the whole thing. And then you know I you know beta readers are a writer's best friend. Writers groups are a writer's best friend. There's a local group like the DC Speculative Fiction Writers Group. Um, they read my book, you know, they gave me some really good advice. I basically took the second half of the book and threw it in the garbage and rewrote it. Um, so, and then it, it finally got to be the book that it is today. So, um, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger once actually said this great quote of, you know, there's no such thing as a self-made man. That is hundred percent me. I did not just, you know, go into a room and lock the door and write and come out with this great book. Absolutely. We'll have other writers, other help, other mentors, other folks, you know, just pitching in giving me those beta reads, thankfully reading it a second time, and then sometimes reading it a third time and saying, you know, and giving truthful, honest feedback of, hey, this doesn't make any sense or this is really stupid. And then I was able to, oh, you know what? That is stupid. Change it, mold, mold it, and modify it, and then actually, you know, come up with a finished product. So it's definitely a, a long journey to get there, um, uh, but uh, it's well worth, well worth it, that journey, that for sure, you know. I bet that reward after five to seven years is just finally. You know, yep. And every yeah. review that comes in on Amazon, you're like, ah, oh, a review. <laughs> you know, <it's> like, yes. <laughs> Someone read it and liked it. Oh, that's that's enough. That's that's really good. That's awesome. That would be that would be very uh, satisfying to have somebody like it. I mean, just just give you a like on it. I mean, you know all that work and it's like your baby, I, I guess, I would guess. It absolutely is. And actually one of the, one of the, um, I, you know, I'm not the kind of person that pats himself on the back or anything, but right. one, of the, one of the reviews was so good. And I was just like, you know, this guy, they were something along the lines of, you know, you know, great new voice in science fiction. And I almost got in tears. I was like, oh. Really? Someone thinks that I, that was, it was that good that I brought that much, you know, interest to someone as they read my book. I mean, that one actually, yeah. like, I was like, you know, what? Because, you know, <laughs> every writer, it doesn't matter what level you're at, really. You have imposter syndrome. You have this, this thought of, man, what I write is terrible. I, what am I doing? This is stupid. I'm, you know, I'm just going to throw this yeah. in the garbage can and burn it, and then I'm going to go live in a van down by the <laughs> river, you know? Um, but the only way to do it. That's the only way to do it. <laughs> you know? Or actually, you know, Honda Element down by the river, because I'm a big Honda Element fan. So um, I read that review though. And I, like I said, it almost brought me to tears and I was just like, man, some one, at least one person in the world, you know, got it. Like got some worthy. It. That was really cool. That was really cool. And it is now framed yeah. uh, above his mantle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. It's the same way it is for podcasters. Every week I go, oh, God, did I just do that? That's horrible. Right. <laughs> We're our worst critics. We are our worst part, critics. That's part of being the creative process. Is, you know, you, you, you're you afraid to put your toe in the water, and then when you do, you're afraid the shark's going to bite it off. So, I think any artist is is probably their own worst critic. If, any you know, creative, really. Yeah, any creative type of artistic talent. <laughs> now, what I do you, isn't artistic. You... I just talk a lot. <laughs> Well, did, you, did you find yourself ever like getting into that point of where it's like uh, I've gotten so deep into writing this, but like now I don't want to. But if I don't, <laughs> I've put so much work into this that. Oh, yeah. No, there, yeah. Were, there were several points where I just sort of like quit. I was like, you know what? This is dumb. I'm going to go play video games and go on Xbox for the next three years. 
And, you know, I wrote my first short story actually when I was 17. Um, I'm 52 and I published this book when I was 51 years old. So, you know, th that's a long stop point where there was a decade, a decade or more where I was just like, this is dumb. I'm not, I can never be like Stephen King. I can never be like Robert Heinlein. I can never be Isaac Asimov. I can never be Terry Pratchett. This is, what am I, what am I even thinking? I'm, you know, so yes, absolutely. There were points where I just put the whole thing down and I went and I, I did something else for sure. I mean, that happens. It's part of the process. Yeah. Well, for the record, I, I think Stephen King might have had some help uh, with other things on that, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, he, he uh, yeah, I mean, he definitely had like, um, I mean, he's got a degree in, in English literature, right? I mean, he's got... Uh, uh, no, I mean, he, he, he might have had some other influences to get all of the stuff written that he has. Oh, you mean, yeah. I mean, who knows, you know? I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe there was some paranormal things happening on the on, on there with Stephen King. But, but he is a fantastic craftsman of the written word. I mean, he is... Br mm -hmm. I know that there's some folks that give... He really stuff. is. He really is. He really. I, there's some people out there that give Stephen King some flack. They can step off. They can. He's, sorry. He, he's I don't gifted. like the man. I don't like the man. But he is a excellent writer. Mm -hmm. he, yes. Excellent he, writer. If you haven't read his book um, on writing, <laughs> I would suggest it. I, I actually did, yeah. and it's and it is great. It is just like gives you into his prospect. It also kind of like hints at you know most most uh, writers are alcoholics. <laughs> You know, oh, no. <laughs> there was a point where he had to give up drinking because, you know, and kudos to him for doing that, for recognizing yeah. that. But, but yeah, that the creative mind sometimes just mm. leans into that sometimes. And, and, but it's a brilliant on writing. I also recommend that it is a, definitely a very yeah. good deep dive into his process, into what he went yeah. through. Um, but yeah, say if you like him, if you hate him, it doesn't matter to me. Right, right. The written word that he comes up with, I think, yeah. Is, Good. No, his books are his books are just brilliant. I mean, yeah. he's I don't I know, even the, know. Can't I, even describe I read, it. I read I read the Tommy Knockers very yeah. young as a. Mm -hmm. um, I used to have to. Um, my mom didn't want to leave me alone to get ready for school and catch the bus, so I had mm -hmm. to stay over at the neighbor's house every morning when she had to leave for work at five thirty. Mm -hmm. And the neighbor's dad had it sitting over on the shelf and I noticed he would like, he would never touch it. It always sat and looked the same. So in the morning I'd be sitting there like with my phone sitting here with the oh. light on it, just like, well, I got to have something to do. <laughs> Jeez, this yeah. is a really good book. <laughs> <laughs> the stand is one of my favorites. Yes. Stand is so yeah. I just, that one haunts me. So, <laughs> yeah. it, Which one is the... Which one is the stand about? Because there was uh, one I specifically remember the cover of the book, but it's the know. about the end of the world where they all go to Colorado and uh, well the the rise of the Antichrist and the end of the world, and they all go go to Colorado to uh, gather. And okay. The I, old I know. Woman I know what you're talking there. about. Yeah. There was another Carol's one. game was another one that was like crazy. Bag of was Bones good. was the one that I was thinking of. That's a really good one too. That's good. Yeah. I was going to ask which, which, if you have a favorite, uh, George, or are you just a fan of all of them? Uh, well, you know, I'll have to. So he, Stephen King wrote a fantasy book once. Um, what is it called? Uh, oh shoot. Um. I read this, uh, yeah, The Eyes of the Dragon, I believe it is. Um, I haven't heard of that one. He wrote this fantasy book called Eyes of the Dragon. Man, I was just like, what? This It was just so cool. It was so good. Um, so it's, I know it's not like his main like horror and it's not mm -hmm. paranormal stuff, but that was a really good book. I really like that book. I have to look into it, that one. It, so I asked you earlier, we talked about, are you a comic book fan? Oh yeah, I love comic books. I love um, I, I I love so you know uh, my first love was the Incredible Hulk. I mean, I, really? I used to try to Hulk out and like, <laughs> um, Spider Man. <laughs> he, he was on in the mornings before uh, before school. So yeah. yeah. In fact, I Spider Man was number two. 
So I, I love Moises mm-hmm. Spidey. Um, I love the X Men, the old 19, you know, 97 X Men, which Disney has apparently relaunched. I haven't had a chance to watch it. So oh, they relaunched the cartoon on Disney Plus, uh, which I have not watched. But um, the old 97 X Men cartoon, man, that was the best thing I've ever seen. Him. That was just cool. That was just cool. Those good cartoons. Those are good I cartoons. Think, yeah. I think as I get older, I realize everything, they're going to remake everything over again. So I don't think they are, too. I don't know why. Because now cause they can't come original, up with new movie concepts. N- nobody has original <laughs> ideas anymore. Uh, like we're talking about ET. Right. Travis Everything was telling hasn't me, been done. Travis was telling me the other day. He's like, I'm pretty sure I read something that they're making another ET, and I was like, I think I heard that. Why? Too, <laughs> what? I hadn't heard that one. I think it might even be more that you know the, these. Uh, so you've got the artists. You know, you, there's a lot of really good artists out there right now. Yeah. A lot of really good, you know, creative people. But you have these business people that are in charge of Hollywood and these business yeah. people, they, they go to business school. So they look at this and they're like, well, I can take a chance on this new author that might have sold a couple thousand books. Or I can go back in time to E.T., which I know million. sold a million, you know, and yeah. I can try to remake that. Because that's, that's I think that, I think it's more that. That's more, you know, these business folks are trying to go Maybe back and is. remind the money. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. That's that makes the most sense out of anything. I about. So, yeah. I was, I mean, really I was capture also, the magic again, though. You, I mean, I was the, also yeah. thinking of people from like that time whenever yeah. mm-hmm. like these movies came out. Now they're older and they're like, yep. No, now I want to do it my way. Hundred percent, right? You know, know. And, and they're also playing to those folks, and I'm one of those folks. I'm in that age group where they're saying, you know, well, yeah. he, he'll go watch this movie again because he's nostalgic, and he'll watch ET again, and I probably will, right? Uh, I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. Um, so they're saying instead of like trying trying to take a chance on a new author with a new idea, let's just mine the gold we've already know that is gold, which is ET, or you know, I know they remade The Stand recently. Um, yeah, they did that. So yeah, they're they're remaking a lot of those stuff. But you do see like new stuff that comes out every once in a while. What was mm-hmm. that show that came out on Netflix? Um, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of it. But they all go to this like you know, Dad. There's this foreign show. They go to this Chinese or uh, I think it was Japanese or Chinese, where they go to this. Um, uh, shoot, I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> ah, I'll come. It'll Are come. Are you talking about Squid Games? Squid Game. Thank you. Oh oh. oh. <laughs> Night, I apologize. My brain is not always. You said Japanese, and I was like, Netflix, the only thing I can think of. <laughs> Squid Game was wild, by the way. I mean, that was like, what is happening here? This That was crazy. So you do get was, new stuff. But I, yeah, I was more interested yeah. in the game show that they made out of it, of people was, having to go through all the... That was oh, fun. I, right? I thought that's what it was. was the, I thought it was the game show. Oh no! They made a they made a first game. they made a show like a like a drama. Of, oh, I didn't know yeah. that. I thought. And then they made a game was. show that after the drama. So both I thought were really good. Oh. I really like both. It reminded me of a really intense Mr. Beast video. Yeah, he did, he did that too. I think he did a Mr. Beast uh, did a, a Squid Game version of that. It was like yes. Survivor on like you know <laughs> Survivor. <Crack. was> <laughs> <laughs> Not wrong crack. Whoa. <laughs> uh, I saw it, Robert Kirkman is going to be doing a Transformers G.I. Joe movie. And I'm like, I saw that. I don't know if I should be excited about this or not. <laughs> I, I will say one of the most excited points I've ever had in my entire life was when I was, I don't know, 12, 13, 14, whatever, whatever age I was. There was an episode of Transformers that came on. And there was this shady dude that showed up in this episode of Transformers and he had this raspy cough and he was like walking with a, you know, blimp at one point. And at the very end of the episode, he goes, man, these guys just don't know how to be really good bad guys. And he just turns around and goes, Cobra! And I uh, lost it. I was like, what? Cobra Commander in the Transformers? Shut up. So, I lost it at that point. So I'm actually kind of like, see, and this is it. They're, they're like, they're playing to the you know older generation. Yeah. I'll go see that movie 10 times. They're, 
They're playing nope. to the nostalgia. Yeah. Well, you have Michael yeah. Bay work just to blow everything up, so <laughs> you yeah. can't be wrong there. Yep. I, I can't say much because I really liked the, the the first two, especially the second ones, Michael Bay Transformers. Mm. But I know so many people who hated him, and I, I'm just thinking, like, now nah, they got to quit with the Transformers. You're just going to really start making people even more mad. Uh. Yeah, actually, it runs yeah, that was one of my yeah. favorites growing up, and uh, I am actually actually excited to see Kirkman uh, take off with it. He bought the rights to it from Hasbro for a uh, GI Joe and the Transformers, so wow. I'm kind of excited. I mean, eventually the zombies are gonna die, right? I mean, come on, The Walking Dead has got to come to an end at some point in time. Yeah, they'll keep making more spinoffs. I actually, I, I. I I love The Walking Dead. I watched it for a long time, but after I, I can't remember. I think it was when The Whispers came on. I was like, uh, I'm out. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I'm done. After after Negan killed Glenn, I was just like, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was like, brutal. <laughs> that was brutal. That was brutal. That was actually pretty brutal. Though. That, that <laughs> was the only point in time I was really invested, and I like came home from work to watch it, and I was just like. What? <laughs> you know, I did read one time that uh, they compared, they did a poll of like comic book users to see who the baddest bad guy was, you know, the most bad guy. And Negan beat out the Joker. And I was really? like, kind of oh, that. and then I went and I got to thinking wow. about it. It, it because of the younger generation, more so, the Joker. Oh. It, 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 more in our era, of course, they're bringing it back that way now. But uh, I was like, "Yeah, that makes sense." Uh, Negan is—he's pretty. Uh, so, once again, I'll show my age. My my favorite all-time villain of any television show ever—you may not know this reference—Scorpius, one of the absolute best yes. villains in history. This is a, a show called Farscape. It appeared on the Sci-Fi Channel for four or five <laughs> years. Scorpius was by all means the best villain in the hit because he was a villain that was driven by a um, uh, the desire to actually do something kind of good. And it didn't matter what he had to do to get his goal. His goal in his mind was justified and he will destroy the universe to get that justified goal. So I remember Scorpius the name Scorpius. <laughs> Is it Scorpius as Thanos? <laughs> uh, I suppose in a weird kind of way, yeah. But but um, maybe there's some yes, there's some correlation there. Thanos was like desperate to get his goal, so and he thought his goal was just and right and pure. Scorpius as well. But the way Scorpius, I, if you have not watched Farscape, um, go out, rent it, watch it. You once you first watch the first episode, bye. I'll see you in like you know. <laughs> I'll thing. see you after I come out of my room in six months. <laughs> Best shows ever. Have uh, you thought about, now I don't know how this process goes, but have you thought about with your book trying to do a movie or a TV show or anything like that? Oh, yeah. No, if there's any like, you know, producers or directors out there that want to contact me to do a movie or a TV show. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> uh, we will drop the email below. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, sure, I love that, but uh, that's you know the, the, there is co stiff creative competition out there, and, and um, you know I don't know how to do that. I, I, I don't know um, anything about that. So yeah. So is is this book like completely serious, or is there like humor elements to it, or? Oh, this is definitely kind of a uh, humor science fiction for sure. Mm -hmm. Because I was thinking, like, you could probably do that, like Men in Black style. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. I, that for sure, for sure. But again, how that works, how you even go about doing I barely know how to publish a book. <laughs> Let alone <laughs> the TV route. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I guess somebody would need did to write a did you, go to a, did you go to a publisher? Uh, yes, yeah, so it is published with a small press. Uh, they're the Wild, Wild Rose Press. Um, great group of folks. Um, absolutely. I can't thank them enough. Um, yeah, no. So they, you know, they shepherded me through the process. So uh, I, I did use a small press. A lot of folks like to do self-publishing. If you're super lucky and, um, you know, uh, you know, you can write a really good uh, a query letter to an agent, you can get an agent and you might get a, one of the big press, big organizations. That's 
hard to do. Uh, at least it is for me. I, I could not. I wrote a dozen, you know, 100 query letters. I must have sent it out 150 times. You know, Harry Potter was sent out, you know, I don't know, 100 and some times, and it was rejected like left and right and left and right. It's very hard to, to cross that that initial barrier of getting published into that you know, the actual professional agent and full publishing realm. Um, once you do it, you're like, you've crossed the threshold and kudos to you, but mm -hmm. it's really hard to get there. It's uh, the, There's a lot of similarities between that and comics is you've got to find the right person yep. and the right button to press before the, the doors swing open for you. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and sometimes it's like for comics, you know, you've got to, perform on the right night, the right person sees you, you get noticed, you know, and that's kind of what it all comes down to. So, you know, if there's a publisher out there or, or if there's a, there's a producer or a TV network or something, or the president <laughs> of Netflix happens to pick up my book and says, Hey, this is pretty cool. Okay, <laughs> do it. <laughs> but that conversation has not happened. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that, um, Amazon has ruined a lot of that, I feel like, with self-publishing because I feel like you just flooded the market. I, well, yeah, and I kind of yeah. also am one of the people that miss the old bookstore. I miss going to a bookstore yeah. and hanging out the bookstore. The bookstore smell with the what? pages or... and the coffee. and mm -hmm. Well, there are a, a numerous independent bookstores and, you know, massive shout out to some of the independent bookstores in Washington, D.C. We've got a ton of them. We have like Kramer's Books. We have Solid State Books. We have People's Books in Tacoma Park, Maryland. Um, shout out to those guys because those are like, you know, people that believe in a, in a book in your hand. The pages yeah. are turning. You know, you get that cozy feeling. So I 100% agree with you. I, lo I love a bookstore. I love going into those independent bookstores in Washington, D.C. Barnes & Noble. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot out there every once in a while. Um, there's, there's, there are, they're, they're, they're fewer than they used to be. <laughs> yeah, for sure. they are for sure. They're, they're, they're going, uh, what was that big bookstore chain that used to be out there for a while? Um, books a million. Books a million and Borders. Books a million. Borders yeah. books. Borders books. Mm -hmm. Borders books was my like, you know, Mecca. I would like go to Borders books and I would just, you know, walk around Borders books and I would just sit there and get coffee and you can just enjoy mm -hmm. your, I think the one that used to be in DC is now a Nordstrom's. So. Oh, wow. The way of things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had a wild chain called Media Play here, and they had a comic book store, video game store, uh, a bookstore. I forget. There was like a bunch of different genres all mixed together there, and it was kind of so cool. Not genres, I guess different different types of uh, atmosphere, and it was so cool. But uh, I don't think they lasted very long. Yeah, I mean, there's still a few good comic book stores out there. That's a whole other um, fantastic world to, to visit and see some, you know, really awesome comic books. And there's actually a really nice amount of graphic artists still writing novels mm -hmm. or writing graphic art books. So um, that's always wonderful to see because that's that's a media that really can't translate very well to Kindle because that's, that's the true. artist that drew it. I want to turn my page and see the, mm -hmm. you know, the artwork. It's not just the story. It's the combination of the story and the art and the, you know, so that's really awesome. The, the having something. The, the, having it in your hands and being like, yes, I have this in my hands and it is mine. And I have my, I still have my Spider-Man comic book collection, by the way. So oh, I have, that's you know, awesome. Me too. Me too. I still have a pull list, but unfortunately it's shipped to me FedEx once a month now. There's no good stores in it. Well, I will say that there's none. There's none close. They're, so. they're fewer and far between. They, they, mm -hmm. you know, it is, it is the wave of the future, you know, and we must ride that wave to whatever shore it will bring us to. <laughs> and it's well, if, I think the ones that are in Atlanta aren't like the old mom and pop stores. Right. They're like a chain, you know. So it's probably just like books yeah. a million or small little Barnes and Nobles. I mean, I, the one of the there was this place in Alexandria, Virginia, where we used to go uh, and catch the bus down to in. Uh, I think it was on Mount Vernon Avenue, actually, now I think about that. And uh, it, it was like walking into somebody's closet. I mean, the, as a firefighter now, that place had to be a huge fire hazard. But <laughs> probably was. And so many comic books. I mean, they're like stacked all over. And you could ask the guy, you know, I'm looking for this, 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 and they'd have it. And they always had the freshest. Of course, back then, there was not that many coming out as, as opposed to today's world. So there's so many uh, books coming yeah. out. How do you uh, how do you find out? Um, 
Well, I don't say, how do you find out? How do you get on some of these best-selling lists? Is it purely based on sales or is it you get it out to people that basically promote you? Is it, or? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> if, if one of your readers can let me know the answer to that question, that'd be awesome. Um, <laughs> no, I was I'm trying, I'm trying to figure that out. Was, uh, myself. <laughs> I, I'm still working on that one. So, uh, I uh, keep, keep you know, us like, updated. <laughs> yeah, uh, like New York Times bestseller. That that's just how many books you sell. How many books get yeah. sold through the different media? It's, um, you know, when you're uh, when you get published through one of the big organizations, one of the big five publishers or four publishers or however many there are right now, um, they put their marketing machine in place and get the word out. So uh -huh. really, it's like you know, for uh, an independent author like myself, you know, I did go a small press, so I didn't do self publishing, but. There's places like, you know, thankfully you guys bring me on so I can mm -hmm. leave my name out there, get the book out there say, hey, this is a really cool book. You know, and I proudly say I only have 71 reviews on Amazon. But hey, you know what? The majority of them are, are like love it. The majority are five stars and four stars. So, you know, give it a read. Uh, that, that's all we can do. But you're right. There's, you know, with the self-publishing world, I think there's uh, the, the, the metric that I saw was a thousand new books come out self-publishing every single week every and week every single week Gosh. and that is really hard to even wrap your mind around i mean it really a is thousand books a week i mean are you kidding me um you, you have to figure out a way to to claw yourself above that to get yeah. to the top you know 100 even and then still, yeah. once you get to the top hundred, there's still a hundred books there that uh, that's the and that's the top ten percent per week. So it's it's very difficult to get on any kind of bestseller list. It, it, is, it is it is a it is a hustle. It is a chore. Mm -hmm. It is a grind. I would say so. Sorry, I was just saying. I think that would take away some of the the fun of it personally because you enjoy the you know the craft of writing you enjoy telling your story but then you got to go out and pimp yourself and hustle and bustle it to me is seems like it would take away from the other side of it i actually talked to a writer a uh, friend of mine yeah now in today's world versus like you know 20 years 30 years 40 years ago 40 years ago you know isaac asimov not, i mean uh, i don't uh, robert heinlein and all those guys maybe that was more like 80 years ago um they would they you know would give their book to their agent mm -hmm. and the book might have been a mess the agent would clean it up and the agent would send it out um mm -hmm. that days are gone right now you've got to wear the hat of writer you've got to wear the hat of proofreader you've got to wear the hat of you know um plot make plot smoother to make sure the mm -hmm. plot works then you've got to wear a hat of marketer you've got to be able to come on here and do these kind of podcasts you've got to be able to write a blog you've got to be able to be on you know, I, I was thinking about doing a TikTok, but it's like, who wants to see me on TikTok, right? So <laughs> somebody, you gotta do, somebody would. <laughs> um, you got to do all these other things to besides writing the book if you want to get, you know, you're noticed. If you want to get climb above that, um, you know, hundred or that thousand books a week number that keeps coming out, you you've yeah. got to you got to fight. Man, yeah, that's not crazy. Not scrapping. I mean, I don't know that uh, I don't know that I have a fight in me. Of course, you know, well, it's the same in the podcast world. I have to, yeah, uh, instantly I go on other shows and I'm uh, talking to somebody every day. If you know, it's funny, I, I wake up and I start the day off running thinking about the podcast, and I go to bed at night thinking about it. So it's it's got to be pretty much the same way. It is a hundred percent the same thing. Your hustle. To, you know, get yourselves out there, get the podcast known, you know, no difference. It's, you know, it's our world. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking over some of these reviews on Amazon and I just find it very funny that the people that rated it like less than five stars can't really give you a reason why. <laughs> I rated this four, but I'm not going to tell you why I took off a star. <laughs> yeah. There's one person that actually gave it a three stars, you know, full disclosure. Um, but she was like, this is a great book. I can't wait to read the next one. And has, yeah, and ha it has three stars. I was like, well, you give me three stars if you can't wait to read the next one. Yeah. yeah 
A series with great potential. This book was a fun science fiction adventure with awesome world building and an exciting cast. Eugene was a bit difficult to cheer on as a protagonist, but I'm happy with the change in him by the end. That's that's probably where you missed your two stars. Oh, oh, I guess. You know, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of potential in this series, and the author left me with a lot of curiosity about where the next book will go. I'd highly recommend this book to fans of science fiction novels like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Reading uh, readers who enjoyed Douglas Adams' novel should find similar humor and adventure in Eugene's. <laughs> But she gave Reggie it three. Yeah, she only gave me three stars. So um, ah, okay, she took okay. off two because she felt that Eugene know, was difficult know, to fine. cheer on. Oh, that anyway, could be it. Everyone has their opinion. Everyone, you know, oh, it's all good. I know. I'm just yeah. mad for you. Oh, thank you. So much. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just be able to for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was. Uh, like, uh, how do you not like a star named Eugene? Come on. You know, McGillicuddy, yeah. you know, McGillicuddy. Yeah, McGillicuddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think that Irish. <laughs> Solid name. Uh, what was, um, wasn't there a cartoon character, McGilla, McGillic? No, it was McGilla Gorilla, I think. What? No. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, maybe. It just makes Not me think point. of MacGyver. <laughs> <laughs> MacGyver. Oh, wow. a great show. <laughs> it was. That, they'll probably bring that back too. I, I hope they don't bring the six million dollar man back. I hope they though. did bring MacGyver back. Uh, did they? Rerun? No, I thought they actually made a, a reboot uh, of MacGyver at one point. Oh, I don't know. I, uh, I maybe. Well, now I have to check. Uh, if they did. I didn't watch it, and my wife didn't tell me because she was a huge MacGyver fan growing up. So <laughs> yeah, in 2016, they made a reboot of MacGyver. 100. Oh, right. really? Yeah. It, wow. Five seasons, so it lasted for a while. <laughs> well, I've been crazy. There's just one line here at the bottom of this one I love. It says, I also wasn't keen on the author's usage of the phrase, I couldn't describe, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> In my mind, <laughs> that's exactly an author's job. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, uh, it's okay. That's okay. Everyone's uh, everyone's entitled. To it's, it's, people are just funny. People are funny. We they get are. the bad reviews too, and I you're get right, it. Right. It's all good. It's all good. It is. Uh, yeah. It, if you if you let them hurt your feelings, they're winning. So I'm, you, you, I'm just you laughing at them. <laughs> <laughs> you do have to have a little bit of thick. You're going to get criticized. You know. Oh yeah. You put anything out there. Someone eventually is going to say you're garbage. You're terrible. Yes, you're, you're terrible. right. But you I'm could be enough. you could be following the writing Bible down to the last syllable, and you'd still be. <laughs> yep. So you know, yeah. All you can do is be your most authentic self. Put together, you know, your words or your podcast or your your yourself, and put it out there in the world. And that's yeah. all. You know, people take it or like it, or take it or leave it. Yeah. Very, very true. Absolutely. Well, when you were writing your book, I've talked to some authors mm -hmm. that will take basically and make like an encyclopedia where they write down mm -hmm. a bio for each one so that they go for each character in their book so that they have somebody to go back to. And then I've talked to other authors who are like off the cuff comedians. It just like flows. Um, I mean, we even had one lady that dreamed a book, got up, spoke it into a voice recorder and then went back and put a 600 page book together from one dream. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, that one was a little, yeah. weird. so, but how, how, what's your style on that? So uh, I'm a little all over the place. I will say that I have had one dream that I did want to turn into a book once. <laughs> so I feel that story. There is this one wild dream <laughs> I had. I was like, man, that was, that was so crazy. I'm going to turn that into a book one day. Um, I haven't really done it yet. So, uh, I am, I think the kind of term is a um, pantser plotter, a, 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 both a pantser and kind of a plotter. So I do both. So what that means is like a pantser is just receipt of the pants. I'm just going to type out. I'm going to see where the story goes and I'm just going to keep going and keep going and keep going. Wherever it goes is wherever it takes me. But I do that with short stories. But with, with novels, I don't want to get 30,000 words into it and be like, oh my God, I can't do this. I just had a dragon appear out of nowhere and like... <laughs> burn the car to death that's doesn't make any sense 
So I do like, you know, I do this sort of plant, uh, pants or plotter mesh together. I do have a book Bible that kind of tells me like all the different characters and all the different aliens and all the different races and all the different places. You know, you kind of have to do that when you get to a novel level, it's, you know, if you're writing, a, uh, especially if you're writing a new world kind of a novel, a fantasy or a science fiction where there's new aliens or there's new geography or there's new political entities, you have yeah, to have that kind of book cities, Bible. New cities, countries. exactly. Mm -hmm. Some people even write, write, do their own maps, right? They like a fantasy world. You're going to draw your own map, mm -hmm. so you can have a, you know, an idea of where all the different countries are. Yeah. So I definitely have a book Bible. Um, I like to write out the outline for the book, um, like just like signposts in the wall, like you know, chapter one he goes to the bar, chapter two he goes here, chapter three he goes there, to give me a signpost. And then once I hit my signpost, then I try to pants it and just do that for the chapter and say, okay, what's going to happen here in this chapter? Oh, that's fun. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's great. Um, but then you have to edit it like four or five times over after you've written it. Then you may throw half of it away and put it back together again. <laughs> I, I do something very similar and then I'll have to, I'll like go weak and can't write. And oh. then I'll sit there and I'll scribble it all down. But like all my notes end up having to be uh, on individual pieces of paper that somehow mysteriously get lost every time. So, <laughs> you know, I, I'd say there's probably, and I'm just going to throw a number out there, a million writers in the world and probably way more than that, like a hundred million writers in the world, you know, a billion writers in the world. There is a billion different ways to write a book, <laughs> right? Every writer yeah. has their own individual way to do it. And every one, every way to do it is okay. The end result is get a book together. Yeah. How you get there, I mean, do what you have to do to get it to work. Absolutely. Yeah, Cheyenne's going to be my author out of us. So there you go. Be, I'm going to be a DJ when I get old and push buttons. And I, I am very he much. Is already old, so we don't know what should happen to her. So I'm going to cut I'm you. Very, I'm very much the type of person that will wake up and be like, that was a great dream. I've got to write all that down right now because it's going to be perfect for a story. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's you'd be surprised how many writers are the exact same thing. You know, their uh, imagination just takes off, and they're like, Oh my god, that was so amazing! Well, my fiance is a comic book artist, so a lot of the times I, I, I'll get these ideas that I'm like, I would love to write a novel on that, but there's no way that I'm going to be able to get into much as much detail as I want. And mm -hmm. there's so much stuff that's like, No, nah, this has got to be put on paper because you just can't put it into words. Oh, hundred percent. You know, I mean, it could be, it's too big, mm. right? The world you create out of a dream is, it, it gets to be so big, especially if you get into like politics of the world, you know, the aliens of the world, if there are any, the magic system of the world, like it just, it's so big. You can't, it, we can't grasp this world, right? You know, all Let the different, like, a whole new one, <laughs> right? But on a whole new one, right? I can barely go shopping and make it happen. Okay. <laughs> I have to have a list in my, my, my hand or I'll mess it up. Yeah, I'm guilty of the Amazon. Oh, I need this. Oh, I just close the cart. Ah, it'll come tomorrow with it anyhow. Right. <laughs> so I'm right. not organized enough to do this, something like that. Well, out of all of uh, the characters in your book, well, how many characters are in your book? Rough guess. Uh, well, there's a few characters. There's, you know, obviously Eugene. He has a secretary named Alice Pemberton, who's not a secretary at all. She's actually um, one of the, she's a super genius. So she um, is a scientific genius. She has an artificial intelligence partner named Eddie, who was sponta spontaneously created inside of an office chair. So he's used to um, calculating ergonomic positions. And now he has to be, you know, figure out how to be sentient. Um, there's a uh, another artificial intelligence called Pepper who came to who uh, spontaneously came into sentience as in a parking meter. So she's uh, much more likely to want to charge someone for parking than she is to figure out how to be sentient. So there's a whole host of category uh, characters. There's also so some one of the alien races. There's these um, aliens called the Rants R A N Z. They uh, look like you know ten foot tall walking dinosaurs um, that. <laughs> And they are uh, an ambassadors to the Galactic Congress. So they, there's there's all kinds of aliens in all different shapes and sizes. So. so that explains the Velociraptor on the cover. That is right. That is actually the character named Ka, who he was the ambassador to Earth. Uh, and he's a dinosaur. 
it got three what stars film? for me off the bat just for the Velociraptor. There you go. Oh, you so fun. Dinosaurs, I should get three stars for dinosaurs. Yep. <laughs> Agreed. So, sad for Eugene, which is your favorite out of all your characters? I have to say Eugene. You know, I mean, he's the, yeah. out the fish out of the water classic story of, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm going to pretend as long as I can, and hopefully nobody gets hurt. And, you know, that's, but, but at his heart, he wants to do the best he can to make sure all of his people around him are safe and secure and, you know, and gets the job done. So I, I have to say Eugene is probably by far one of my, my favorite characters in the book. Oh, that's such a good premise. Love it. And in your, your second book, is Eugene in different worlds or is he in the same world or does he get? So it's the same world. Uh, so this in the second book, it's called Alice Pemberton's Bureau of Scientific Inquiry. Oh. Alice Pemberton, the, the super genius who's not at all a secretary, um, <laughs> takes the center stage and has to solve a brand new case on her own. With um, And so it's about her adventures now solving this case and also still trying to keep Eugene out from hurting himself. So um, hopefully that'll be out this year. I love it. Have you already got written or are you just finishing it up? Oh, no, that's with the publisher. So that is, yeah. um, it's in hopefully final stages. Um, they're going, you know, through all, they, they have a million things they do, which I'm not really sure all the different publishing steps. They have to, you know, the cover and all that kind of stuff. So, um, mm -hmm. oh, did uh, someone He'll be right back. Oh. <laughs> he just hit, hit, hit a wrong button, I'm sure. Hit the wrong button. That's okay. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the sequel will be coming out um, hopefully this year. That's awesome. Very, very cool. cool. Do, um, do, oh, go ahead. Sure. I was gonna say, does um, does uh, AI Pepper also? Okay, <laughs> I have no idea what is going on. <laughs> All right, so okay. disappeared. Okay, I gotta ask now. So does the AI, does AI Pepper try to sell us her goop? Her what? Her goop. Her goop? What is goop? You guys never heard of that? I've heard mm -hmm. of goop. Oh, wait, is that Gwyneth <laughs> Paltrow? Yeah. Oh, her company. no. No, there's no goop. Dang it. There, there's no goop. <laughs> I was distracted trying to figure out. We all disappeared for a minute where we went. So yeah. <laughs> we, don't know. we didn't travel or something there. Glenn, I'm worried. We haven't heard from Wendell this evening. Yeah. Well, maybe we should send out a signal because we have we have, George, we have several uh regulars. <laughs> well, we must something must be wrong because Brenda didn't even know what night it was. So uh <laughs> so, it could just be so, Brenda. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. So we have several regulars, and so yeah, we have to check on Wendell. I'm not sure. He's usually in here by now asking if you've ever seen a Bigfoot. So <laughs> If you don't answer him the first five times, he gets more persistent. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I have not seen a Bigfoot. Um, so, but then again, I don't go places where they are. I, I'm pretty sure there's no Bigfoot walking around D.C. Um, you never know. We have coyotes. There actually have been a coyote sighting every once in a while, and there's definitely foxes. But uh, to my knowledge, there are no big feet in uh, D.C. But, you know, as I was saying on the uh, earlier um we have this awesome park called Rock Creek Park in Washington, D.C. So I, I'm a D.C. resident. I've been here my whole life. I love the city. Rock Creek Park. It is a very big park. Never can tell. It's actually mm -hmm. bigger than Central Park in New York City. So who knows? Maybe there's something in there. You never can they tell. Do they just live amongst the shrubbery. They, there's when, a lot of shrubbery. When I was growing up in Virginia, there was the Mount Vernon Monster, which was supposedly a Bigfoot. So hmm. and. We saw something out in the woods that to this day I've still not been able to explain. So it could have just been a in Bowie, Maryland, there was the goat man. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, yeah, and then uh was it Herman has the bunny man, I think. I think Where it's, it's Hern in Virginia. It's just oh. outside. Yeah, I think it's Hern. Bunny it's man. they have the bunny man. Beware, he will fertilize the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. I'm totally sidetracked. I'm looking at all my technical screens, and that shouldn't have happened. So <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> it's but one of the things about doing a paranormal show is sometimes things just go a little crazy. So uh, it's Xfinity we trying to get revenge. <laughs> <laughs> we <weren't> even, <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> uh, 
Are, are there any paranormal ghosts, ghouls, or anything like that in your book? Uh, Bigfoot, maybe? Uh, there are no. Well, um, there is there is an abominable snowman at one point. Um, oh. <laughs> in the I'm in. Part of the book. Um, there, there are ghosts in the book. There absolutely are. Very okay. Cool. Very cool. I like it. I do too. So before we, before we let you get out of here, we always ask our guests uh, if you do have a paranormal story to share with us. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we also want to know where we can find your stuff and what you got coming up next. Obviously, your book, but sure. uh, if you have any other projects. Sure. Yeah. So I actually have two paranormal stories. So this this Yay. is a, this is two for Tuesday, even though it's Wednesday. Um, <laughs> it is Wednesday, right? Um, yes. so, uh, <laughs> for all intents and purposes, it's Tuesday now. There we go. Uh, so the first one, actually, when I was a kid, I was like, you know, eight, both of these are when I was a child. I was like eight years old or nine years old or something. like. Maybe it was like even six years old. Back in these old houses in um, New Carrollton, Lanham, Maryland, where I, uh, my father had a house, um, there was these metal poles in the basements that, that, hold, that held the house up, They're like the support beams. And they're these, like, you know, about that big or so. And I, uh, I was, I remember, I, I never forget it. I was on the pole and I was spinning myself in a circle and my brother was sitting there and his friends were sitting there. And I do not doubt even to this day that I saw somebody walk across the door, uh, like in the hallway. And I was like, I, I still remember distinctly. It was like some dude walked across, he had a beard and I was, I was freaked out. I like, oh my goodness. Walking. I stopped going in a circle and I was like, went to my brother and I just like stood by him the rest of the night. He's like, what are you doing? It's like, <laughs> I didn't say anything. I was just like looking at the door and I was like, and I didn't say it, but there was someone that walked across the door threshold and I will never say that what didn't happen. I don't know what that was. That wow. Was Not that today, was Satan. Creepy. <laughs> that was, that was, that, that blew me away. I mean, it was just like someone had just like walked across the door. You know, when you're in a hallway and somebody like those horror horror movies, somebody mm-hmm. walks across. Guarantee yeah. what happened. That would freak me out, and I, I, I will never forget that. And I was like six or seven years old. Wow. Um, the the second story I have, um, it's even weirder. So, and I don't remember this. So when I was like four, oh, you left again. There he went again. Should we wait until he comes back? I guess. Yeah, wait till he comes back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I am not sure what is going on. I, this is uh. This shouldn't be happening. <laughs> this no, are happening. you pressing any buttons? Okay. No, I'm not even touching anything. Oh. So, this shouldn't be happening. All right, so go ahead with the second story. I'm the sorry. We got the story. <laughs> it's even weirder. So when I was around four years old, my grandpa died. Um, uh, I remember when we were in Ocean City on vacation, and I remember everybody being sad. Um, uh, that's all I really remember from it. Um, fast forward 30 years later. I, or 20 years later, I'm 27, 28 years old. My grandma was like, you know what? I'll never remember. I'll never forget this. You know, the day after your grandfather died, when we were back, you came to, up to us when you were like a little boy and you were like, and you, I don't, I don't, I don't, <laughs> my grandmother, I believe her 110%. She's my grandmother. She's not going to lie. She's like, you said, don't worry, grandma. I talked to grandpa last night and he said, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. I don't remember that. She guarantees I said that, freaked me out. And I was just like, what? I didn't say that. He's like, oh, I remember it clear as day. You came up to us and you were like, I talked to grandpa last night and he said everything's going to be just fine. He probably what? came to you. That was weird. That was a weird one because I don't remember it. And I was just like, but I don't doubt her in a second. Her, her mind was as sharp as it ever was. Um, mm-hmm. So that was my two stories. That the, the second one was like, you know, man, that was weird. Yeah. How old were you? <laughs> when it happened? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was like four. Okay. Five. Well, children are pure. I mean, but you listen. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm distracted old by looking at the trying to figure this out. You look very old. But... <sighs> there will be a troubleshooting ticket put in tonight. So, yeah. <laughs> Atlanta, Atlanta has finally gotten me into the gigabyte per. I don't know what is it, a minute, a second, whatever it is, and I'm up at the highest speed, and there should be no excuse for this. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's just 2024, so I mean, we can put a space shuttle into or 
orbit with a uh, calculator, but we can't get a podcast off the air. <laughs> he he just changed the internet. If he didn't, if you didn't know, yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I had Xfinity curses to them uh, forever, and now I've got AT and T. And they came out here, and there was a guy who shined a light in my face and said, "Look, this is the fastest you'll ever have." And I'm like, "It's a light." Oh, you mean fiber optic cable? Yeah, 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 fiber optic. It's it's all Greek to me. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'm that old man that goes into Radio Shack now and lets the kid <laughs> handle things for me. There you go. Yeah, I take my Battery of the Month Club. You will probably be the only one that gets that reference, the Battery of the Month Club card, and, and get my <laughs> battery. I, I only do because my coworker worked for Radio Shack for 15 uh, years, and she often talks about battery of the month club <laughs> cool. yeah that was my first job out of high school so yeah so <laughs> yeah, people will fight you over those batteries <laughs> That's funny. so george um where can people find you and aside from your book do you have any other projects coming out uh, or any upcoming appearances uh no unfortunately no upcoming appearances uh you can find me at georgeallenmiller.com um, that has links to my Facebook, to my Reddit, which, you know, I have one follower in my Reddit, my subreddit with, so, you know, stop by. I will, and, I will find okay. it right now. I am queen Reddit. <laughs> Thank you so much. So it'd be nice to have two. Uh, so I'll, uh, you know, that'd be great. So, um, georgeallenmiller.com links to all my Reddit, my Twitters, my socials. Um, I may start a TikTok one of these days, but it's like, uh, I don't know who wants to watch me, but, uh, uh the, uh, you can find the book George, uh, Eugene J. McKellicutter's Yelling Detective Agency on Twitter, on Amazon, and the sequel should be coming out later this year. Okay. Nice. All right. Well, George, I have appreciated you coming on here tonight. And um, when the next book comes out, will you come uh, tell us all about it? I absolutely will. I can't wait to come back again. Thank you so much for having me. This has been fun. Um, I would Thank love you. to come back and, you know, uh, if you all want to join Reddit and we can have chats about the book or, you know, I'm on Reddit. big feet in uh, Central Park, uh, 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 Rock Creek Park. Let's talk about it. Heck yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm still learning Reddit, believe it or not, and I haven't learned TikTok either. So you're not alone there. So <laughs> <laughs> It was really good to meet you, George. It was great to meet all of you. Me is just you. Awesome. Ugh. all right thank you george i'm gonna let you go i do appreciate your time tonight and uh, i will drop you a note soon and i'll probably uh try and get a copy of the book from you to sign for me so sounds good i'd appreciate that Bye. Bye. Have a good night. all right all right bye-bye right. yeah. right. bye. Bye. let's see if i can remember what button to push now <laughs> goodness okay so yeah i'm like really annoyed at uh i've not dropped internet provider so and it's it sounded really good this whole time but I don't mean to jump, but I'm going to have to jump on y'all tonight. But we went away. You have to jump on me? I'm going to have to jump off for tonight. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. I'm oh, sorry. I was like, what are you talking about? Okay. All right. All so, right. yeah, that's fine. Well, I mean, Dina's always here. I mean, unless you're planning to leave me too, Dina. No, I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't think about that there for a minute, didn't she? That was a long pause. <laughs> wow. Are you okay, Dina? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Okay. All right. Well, wasn't sure. All right. Well, Cheyenne, I'm sure we'll chat tomorrow. Um, oh, yes. I've got to go get, we've got a kitten ready for space tomorrow. Ooh. All right. How old is she? She seven or eight months now. Okay. All she right. doesn't well. look like she's that old. She's a little a little booger. But she's the last one that we've got to technically take care of. Yeah. So. so when she goes into heat, she is a nutso cat. Oh boy. <laughs> Hold me, love is that me. her screaming. <laughs> Sounds like a woman. I, I, I heard that. Did you hear it? Yeah. What was that? I don't know. I, did you see my face? Because I was yeah, like, did you see mine? I was like, how'd that come from? So, um, was it at your house? I don't know where it was. It I have wasn't no idea. here. I just heard it over this. I, it didn't sound like it came from anywhere around the house. It didn't sound like it came from here. Huh. It was George. Okay. 
<laughs> well, I didn't hear it. All. I didn't hear it at all. Well, you might have heard me scream when the internet went out or whatever. No, it was, it was a woman screaming. If it was you, you need to go to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always that possibility. No, I never. Riot, so. Yeah. Well, could have come through this. I will know when I listen back. So. Because I, mean, I will wild. tell you, I've been uh, noticing here lately that I'm doing a lot more editing. There are things that come through the microphone I don't always catch. It was loud. As, I mean, it was like it sounded far off, but it was loud. Yeah. I never heard it. It was very, it was really, it was very clear. <laughs> yeah, very clear. Like a, like a shriek yeah. of some sort. It's crazy. No, it was, well, if it was the tiny terrorist, I would have heard it. So, no, it's clearly a woman. Hmm. Oh, well, okay. I was looking at George when it happened and he wasn't acting like anything. Yeah, so. he didn't act like he'd heard it at all. Me and Cheyenne just put, I mean, both our faces were like, <laughs> what? Where the hell did that come from? <laughs> Blink twice if you need help. <laughs> wow. Okay. No, I'll, yeah, I will go back and listen for sure now. Um, because no, I didn't hear it. Before uh, you came in, Dina, uh, they came in and had a, uh, I guess it was a YouTube, maybe a TikTok, I don't know. It was bats. You know, they're, uh -huh. they're shrieking or chirping or whatever it is they do. Mm -hmm. And Beth couldn't hear it. And Wyatt was like, oh, bat, 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 you know. Yeah. I could hear it, but it sounded like crickets off at a distance to me, but I could hear it. Beth couldn't hear it at all. So oh. it, Cheyenne said, hear it clear it. as day from, oh, <laughs> you know, there's something about how uh, the younger younger people can hear certain pitches that older people can't hear. That's true. That's true. And well, I, well, I've been around jets and fire engines too. There's certain most of decibels of yeah. uh, wheels or. Well, mm -hmm. I don't know. I I was that kid coming home from school with her headphones in and the music blasted up as high as I could have it. So I'm a daughter too, but. Uh, <laughs> She, uh, she actually she's the one that told me that when she was in school she learned it but um she was like can you hear this can you hear that she'd like go around and play different tones for me can you hear this i'd be like no <laughs> i can hear it <laughs> but, uh, they used to be the cow because he's colorblind you hear that? <laughs> and they would bring up those colorblind charts you know with the little number yeah. or something or whatever and they would yeah. all come up from the cow go can you see this and that used to make it <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like, I can't believe we can't hear that. <laughs> but no, I do. Jeez, mean that. I forgot my hearing aid. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just you don't. I don't know why. It's just the older you get, you don't hear certain uh, high pitched. Yeah. Tones. Sure, it's probably got to do with our deterioration as yeah. we get Cochlea older. In your ear or whatever. <laughs> Cochlea. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've noticed, and I don't know if it's from because I wear these so much now, mm -hmm. but I've started getting uh, ear infections again like I was a kid. Oh, really? I yeah, I didn't have them forever, huh. you know, since I was a child. And now I've had like two last winter, and I'm like, what is going on here? Oh, it is interesting. Do your ears get uh, hot and sweaty in those? Not really, no. I mean... Mm -hmm. These, but now these are a little bit different than the other ones. The other ones had like that cloth around them. These are uh -huh. more, it's not vinyl, but it's something like that. And it like cups around the ear. So it's not yeah. sitting exactly on the ear. But the other ones oh. were just like cloth and just like hmm. took a rubber band and was stop around my oh. head. <laughs> do, you, do you clean your um, CPAP regularly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spray it down every night. Yeah. The inside yeah. of it, everything. Mm -hmm. And your hoses and all that shit. All yeah. That <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a uh, spray. Mm -hmm. It's it's a natural company uh, that makes it. And it's just a big squeeze bottle. And I just soak it all down, shake it, mm -hmm. and hang it over the shower curtain. Or, yeah, the, well, the bar for the shower door. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, so yeah, I do that every night. I'm not so good about the tank, but yeah. that could be it. Yeah, it's, yeah, I need to get better about the tank because, but I just the thought of putting a chemical in that bothers me. Yeah. So I mean, 
the hose and stuff, because I know this is natural, but that stuff wouldn't really work in that closed environment. Yeah. It would never dry, whereas the other one can either drip dry or air dry. Mm -hmm. Closed in that little tank, it would never, and that just kind of, yeah, no. If you rinse or rinse it out and just let it air dry, just keep the any algae or. I forgot or, one time and uh, left like that much uh, tap water in it. Mm hmm. And it just, I filled it up the next. I knew immediately. Yeah. <laughs> I put it on. I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. All right, you guys. Oh. All right. Well, yeah. Uh, you get out of here. Go take care of Kitty and uh, see if you can find Wendell while you're at it. So. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll, I'll go bug Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> That's where he is. He and Bobby all together. <laughs> That's where that's where he was at Hibachi the other day. Uh yeah. You know what? <laughs> You're right. He's cheating on us. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, Bobby. <laughs> uh, Dang it, we'll Bobby. Have, have to put a hit out on him. Well, I sent the link to our second guest, and I'm gonna send it again just in case for some reason it changed when no, it didn't, but uh I'm gonna send it again just in case, but all right. Well, you guys have a good night, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. All you right. Too. We'll see you soon. Have a good night. Bye. And, you know, Dina, I did notice um, there was an air at the bottom of my screen that my internet did go out. Oh, it did? Out. Yeah. Oh, so, weird. Yeah, that is very weird. So, But this is my first time having fiber, so but they said it was 100%. Perfect. I mean, they check it with this thing. It looks like a lightsaber. I mean, it's oh. like a miniature little lightsaber. He plugs the cable in, and it glows across this little lightsabery looking thing, and it gives him a number. Are you wireless or? <laughs> no, I'm. I'm tapped right into the fiber. My computer mm -hmm. is. But yeah, so. Well, oh I guess it's from the back of the router or modem. To the computer, but yeah, it's yeah. tapped right in. But oh. Yeah, it was weird because I'm used to um, the old uh, screens being, you know, with uh, the coaxial cable giving you a reference, but uh, yeah. like a little light that lit it looked like a lightsaber. Oh, oh here we go. Here we get Tom in are, here. Now. Are all oh. your, uh, hey. I was there. I don't know what happened. I had to, I went on and came back. Oh, oh. I was, I was well, watching, I was watching uh, George. Uh, oh, <laughs> well, we oh, such a great conversation you guys were having with George. I wish I had been part of that. Oh well, well darn it! That was really <laughs> that was really great. If I'd seen you, I would have added Jim. <laughs> yeah, we, I don't know if you heard me talking, um, but I've just got uh, fiber internet like uh -huh. yesterday, and so it's I'm like the new kid on this, you know, in the corner with the toy, but. When it blinked earlier on me, I'm like, I don't know what happened. It was, was <laughs> just, you just vanished. First you vanished, and then everybody yeah. vanished, and then y'all mm -hmm. came back. And it was like, where'd they go? <laughs> where'd they go? And yeah. And I, why wasn't I invited? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> it didn't see you. Tom party didn't go there. by. So, I'm trying <laughs> not to be offended because Cheyenne left. It's like, well. Please. Oh. No, she yeah, had she, to take care of a kitty cat. I know. Poor cat. <laughs> that doesn't know what it's in for, right? No. Nope. No. <laughs> Not a clue. Poor cat. I don't know. It thinks it just missed its little treats for tonight. It doesn't realize the real thing come <laughs> up in the morning. It did. Poor cat. Anyway. So, so, so Tom, where are you located in this world? And I'm um, lo located near Los Angeles. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. So uh, you're, you're definitely much further than uh, our first guest. He was in Washington D.C. So yeah, he was, yeah. He was, I, so, I, don't know, I don't know his the park he was talking about in Washington D.C. I don't either. That sounded really cool. It did. You yeah. know, I grew up there, and it's on the Maryland. So if you're kind of looking at D.C., it's on the eleven o'clock, uh, three o'clock. So right, eleven o'clock, three o'clock side where Maryland meets it. And I think more of the park is actually in Maryland than it is DC. Oh, okay. We're there. Okay. 
but yeah, it's uh, it's a huge park. But I grew up on the Virginia side, so I didn't get to go over there. We had our own little um, parks on that side of Fort Hunt and uh, you know, Mount Vernon and all kinds of uh, different areas. So, but yeah. So Tom, you've written a book. Now you've I written a, a Southern mystery style a journal. Book. Yeah, What's I have. That? Called Jolly Roger. Jolly, Jolly Roger. Roger. Right. So amazing. tell us a little bit about your book, how you got to the premise of writing the book. And- oh, it's, a, it's such a long story. Tell um, it. <laughs> uh, it's, it all started, it started with my father. <laughs> well, no, well, it did actually. My, my dad, <laughs> my dad was born in Lake Charles, Louisiana in 1909, right? So a long time ago, my dad was born there. And I grew up hearing stories about Lake Charles and Jean Lafitte um, mm-hmm. and his treasure. And that was one of the, my, my dad loved to tell stories. And it was hard to tell sometimes whether they were true stories or they weren't true stories. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm pretty sure that the story about the 10-legged jibberjacker was not true, but I, I don't know that for sure. <laughs> um, but he, the, the stuff about Jean Lafitte really turned out to be to, to be fact, and um, so that that was always that was always present in my mind. And when when I was in high school, um, my cousin and I used to make movies, Super Eight movies, mm-hmm. and I decided there that I wanted to be a writer, but I wanted to be a screenwriter. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted oh. to write screenplays, and so I went to film school. And when I got out of film school, I started writing and, and, you know, I've had stuff optioned and I've had stuff, I've been commissioned to write stuff, but I've never, ever had anything um, done. You know, I, I, I've never had anything produced. Um, but I got sidetracked from writing myself when I went to work for a, um, a, a motion picture company. And I started in the mail room there. And I wound up being uh, head of motion picture development, right? So I was working wow. with writers and, and um, developing their screenplays. So I became really good at s- structuring screenplays and doing all that stuff. And I, I, I never, ever, ever thought about writing a novel. That was not something that I ever thought about doing because whenever I think of a story, I always think of it in terms of a screenplay. How are you going to structure it with a screenplay? And I've been looking at um, Amazon, not Amazon, I'm sorry. Um, um, <laughs> I look at Amazon all the time. Um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> when you look at um, your, 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 your heritage, your, your, mm-hmm. your, your family, right? And yeah. So I've been looking at that a lot and I learned some really interesting things about the family. Uh, And there's this whole branch of the family, uh, the Cretiens. Uh, It's my grandmother, great grandmother was born a Cretien. And what I discovered about the Cretiens was, well, they have this this big plantation, actually the Cretien Point Plantation, um, which the interior was used and gone with the wind or it was patterned. Tara was patterned no. after after this plantation. And I never even knew that was part of the family. But what I discovered Thank was you. they had a real link to Jean Lafitte. Mm-hmm. So Lake Charles has this link to Jean Lafitte. And my family in there right outside of Baton Rouge, mm-hmm. they also had this link to Jean Lafitte. So this story started coming together to me about about if if Jean Lafitte had this treasure, and the treasure, by the way, is not your ordinary pirate treasure. The treasure of Jean Lafitte is supposed to be Napoleon's crown jewels. Mm -hmm. That Napoleon was, knew his time was getting slim in France. He was gonna have to get out. And he planned on leaving France, fleeing France and going to New Orleans. In fact, in New Orleans, there's Napoleon House, which is supposedly the place that was bought for Napoleon. Well, the story goes that Jean that Jean Lafitte actually got the crown jewels 
from um, Napoleon, and his job was to take them um, to New Orleans mm -hmm. and keep them safe. But on the trip back, of course, him being a pirate, he was being chased by both the British and the Spanish. <laughs> so he sneaks up the Calcasieu River out of, out, out of the Gulf of Mexico and into the bayous. And that's what he used to do. And he buried oh. the treasure someplace. And so the story my dad always told was that he buried it on Contraband Bayou, which is mm -hmm. called Contraband Bayou because that's where Jean Lafitte used to hide. Oh. Um, so this story just began to percolate in my head about there was this family, Lake Charles is named after Charlie Salier. They were good friends with Jean Lafitte. Um, so this story about Jean Lafitte leaving clues to the treasure with both the Salier family and the Cretien family. Um, so I had to find a way to bring those two together. So there's, there's this modern story, a murder, where Roger Cretien is murdered. Mm. And he's, he was supposed to be married to uh, Margot Salier. Um, and so Roger's brothers come into town to bury their brother. And they get involved in not only solving the death, the murder of their brother, but also in looking for the treasure. And so that's how the story, that's how the story came about. But I couldn't, I couldn't think of how to do it as a screenplay. Because you have all this great stuff about Jean Lafitte on one hand, which is like, you know, 200 years ago. Yeah. And you have the present day story. And I didn't want to do flashbacks. I didn't want to do any of that. Right. stuff. And so it just, it just happened that it, it, it worked best for me to write it this way. So mm -hmm. that's what I did. That sounds exciting and well, very was, interesting. It was so much fun. I, I wrote the first three chapters really easily, and then I stopped writing, and I didn't write anything more on it for 10 years. A what? Well, well, <laughs> that's, 10 years. That's, a, that's a writer's break or pause well, there. It was. It was like, I, no. <laughs> I got I got to this point and I I went you know I'm I, I'm not sure I I had this outline I had this outline of the story I knew where it was going to go mm -hmm. but I went you know I really have to flesh it in a little bit more because because when you're when you write a novel and you realize you have to be writing at least fifty thousand words yeah it's like that's 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 daunting, you know, that's like, mm -hmm. I don't know whether I have 50,000 words that I can write. Of course, when it got to the end, the first draft was over 100,000 words. So oh, wow. I, I didn't, I shouldn't have worried about it that yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, you weren't short of words. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't, and, I wasn't, and I wasn't short of material either. And, no. and, but, but I really had to sit down and, well, also life was going on, right? Mm -hmm. I was principal at a school and all this other uh, stuff was going on. And so this was not a high priority to me. But right. once I retired, then I went, you know what? I solved the problems I had to solve. And and I just, then I went ahead. Then it was real easy to write the rest of the book for me. Well, yeah. I shouldn't say easy, but it went quickly after that. Yeah. That's a yeah, lot of procrastination. It was. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like it was terrible. Well, to be really honest, there was one, there was one <laughs> issue that occurred to me that I just went, I don't know how to deal with this, and that's I was doing. When you're doing a story that part of it takes place in the early 1800s in the South, you're talking about the family plantation. You realize that at some point you're going to have to address slavery. You're going to have to yeah. do this, right? And yeah. and 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 the characters in the story are going to have to address this, right? True. They're going to have to come to grips that at some point in their in their family's heritage, their family owned slaves, right? Yeah. And I just went, I. First of all, I'm an old white guy, and whether right. I should, whether I should be writing that part, yeah. I don't know. And how to do it without it completely overpowering the book, I really mm -hmm. didn't know. And so I, but eventually, I just said, you know what. Um, they're going to have to have a conversation, and yeah. <laughs> I knew I knew where it was going to happen, and I just went, you know, when I get there, I'll do it. And and the the funny thing is, is that it did not happen the way I planned it to happen. 
I got to a point in the book and these two other characters, one of the, the, the daughter and her boyfriend mm -hmm. are the ones that have the conversation, um, which was, it's really interesting to me. I don't know if you've ever had this experience, if you've ever done writing, but it's always interesting to me how your characters can take control and decide what they're going to do. And it seems like you have no control over them at this point. It's like, this is yeah. what they're going to do. And they just do it. And you're just kind of sitting there and you're, you're typing it, kind of watching them almost do this. Uh, so it was kind of, it's really fascinating. It was, it was fun. It is how, how the characters develop uh, their own personalities and their own and it, and like, needs. Okay. And that's cool. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really happy. Actually, I'm really, really happy with the way that part turned out because That's I think good. it was really cool. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I would uh I would not have a clue how that is because I, I'm not much of a writer. I try, but I don't think it's just in me, or maybe I've just got eternal writer's block, but uh <laughs> I'm better at running my mouth than so <laughs> well, that's the first guy, you know, it's like <laughs> Yeah, it's like you know. I I have to I have to say this because this is this is about this is about the conversation we had with George uh, <laughs> when we're talking about reviews. Um, truly, this is like I have on Amazon. I have eight reviews. <laughs> they're all they're, they're all five star reviews, and oh. people say amazing things that I I my I. I, I boggle my mind because they, <laughs> they they talk they talk like i'm a real author you know and it's like, yeah you're like they, they I, I talk i'm a real writer <laughs> yeah, really. and, and, and you know you were talking too earlier of, with george about um um uh, imposter syndrome mm. you mentioned that and i just had that conversation <laughs> with somebody yesterday about coming oh, on did. here i said i have to go on this show and i have to pretend like i'm a real writer <laughs> It's okay. I pretend like I'm a real podcaster. So. Like, okay. You get like two fans out of this. So <laughs> one of them's me, one of them's Dina. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the only thing my old man ever taught me was ABC audition. Go out there. B pretend I use a, a bull word in there <laughs> and see close get the heck out of there as quick as you can so audition bs and close that's pretty that's much it that's all you gotta do that's, that's, your life. Life. So, that's it so well, you I and, found, it, go sorry. ahead dude. you and george to get together if you write screenplays and oh you know what yeah i know i was listening to that and i went you know <laughs> i <laughs> I wish I had the answer for him about you know I I I was I was really part of the business like thirty years ago, and yeah. so I, all the all the people that I know are 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 dead now. Oh, well, of course, that's how it always goes. <laughs> but you see, you could have lied and told you had a Hollywood walk of uh, star there. So. I could have. I could have. You could have. Well, I could. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, you know, it is it is true when you do retire. I left Washington DC in ninety-two from the fire department there, and all the people that I worked with have all since they're gone. Right. And yeah. so yeah. kids there now. That's so awesome. it is a weird feeling. It is a back. weird feeling. You know, yeah. I I I I talk to I talk to people that that I, that I work with and they're not dead, they're but they're but they're retired, you yeah. know, and, and it's like we we commiserate with each other, you know, because it's like <laughs> It's like I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Wait, I have no uh, clue. Not a clue. So yeah, it's hard. You feel like it's kind of a hard. has been, you know. <laughs> it's like everything's yes. behind you. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I keep trying to figure out what tomorrow's going to bring. It's, it's challenge. What am I having for breakfast? I don't know. <laughs> oh well, it's fun. What brought me or drew me to your book was uh, I've always been a sucker for like the old pirates tales, the old pirate stories and that thing. And so that's what brought me to your book. Of course, obviously the name got me real right. dead and went from there. Um, 
it but it just floors me you wrote three chapters and then 10 years you didn't do anything with it. and and i was really happy with the first three chapters i have to say i really yeah. was and um and it wasn't like i went i'm not i can't finish this i just didn't know how to finish it yeah and i didn't i because i would always come back to it i always think about it and i would always go I mean, there were a lot of problems. There, there were a lot of questions I had. You know, it was like, well, do I have enough material to write a whole book? You know, and then okay, I, I figured I probably had enough material. And then, then there was a whole slavery thing, which yeah. really puzzled me for quite a while. Um, but also, I I started with the the structure that I started with the book um, is kind of an unusual structure. And I wasn't sure I could sustain it for a whole book, honestly. Mm -hmm. And um, what I what I finally what I finally realized was this: I said, you know, I can, I I'm certain I can continue this structure for the first section of the book. I should explain that a little bit, mm -hmm. because when when you write, when when you structure screenplays. Most of the time, we think in terms of three acts, right? So you have mm -hmm. the first act where you build the story, and then you tell the bulk of the story, and then the last act is it's like a play, right? Yeah. And that's what you think in. And so that's the way I structured the book. I structured in three parts. And so I knew that I could keep the same structure for, for the first part. And then I went, you know what? Nobody says that I have to c continue this exact same structure for the next part. That's true. Because I'm writing the book. I'm making the rules. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like I can do whatever I want. Yeah. So I went, you know, I, so just let me, just let me finish, you know, because that's the way, that's the way I find I work is that I have to get to a tilting point. And once I get to that tilting point, I just finish it. Mm -hmm. And, after three chapters, I wasn't there, and I knew I had to get to that point, and that was the that was the end of the first part of it, yeah. and then I could feel confident that I that I had the ability to write a novel, yeah, and that's what happened. So yeah, that makes yeah. sense. I it mean, does. well, and plus we all as we grow older, we all mature, and life happens, and mm -hmm. you know so. It, it in a story like this to me it sounded like with the genealogy and things you were pulling from it that that played a big part of it as well it did absolutely absolutely and and what i what i learned is that i'm i'm in the midst of of writing a second book i had no intention of writing a sequel to the first book none whatsoever except i found another story in my ancestry a brother of the of one of the characters that's in, a real life brother of one of the one of the characters that's actually in the book that he has a, a real interesting story to tell so now i'm using that as a jumping off point yeah jumping off point yeah. it's it's like because in 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 my book what i what i do is i i, I tell dual stories right i have yeah. the present day story but i also have at the beginning of every chapter i have a, a blurb that is story, part of the story, like the, the Jean Lafitte story uh -huh. I tell that's separate from the story I'm telling, which is really interesting but because by the time but by the time the reader gets finished with the book, the reader actually has more information about what's going on than the people in the book, the characters in the book. So there are things that 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 happened and they don't know why, but the reader knows why because they've seen it happen. Does that make sense? Yeah, I yeah, like they, that. Yeah, I, 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 as a, as a, as a, well, I, I, I love to read to begin with. So uh -huh. novels, I read a lot of novels and 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 screenplays. I hate, I hate flashbacks really, uh -huh. and I hate when characters at the end of a book. You always have it where they sit in a room and somebody explains what happened. You know, somebody yeah. explains the you know the backstory and why did that I happen? I didn't want to do that. <laughs> right. So I, yeah. I I did this. I really like the way it works. I, I, I like really that. Cool. I, yeah. yeah. Because 
I could see like it, it's on. It's like you're watching, sort of watching a movie, and you see these characters, and you kind of know what's going on, and you're like, you can see yourself like going, "No, don't do that," because you know what's going to happen. Right. <laughs> right. That's right. I or, love yeah, it. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's. I just found this to be a, a, an incredibly interesting experience writing this book because yeah. it was like I, it was it was it was wonderful. And whether it's good or not, you know, that's something else that you kind of talked about with George is that mm -hmm. that that when you write, you have to only write for yourself, right? right. At the beginning, because that's yes. you know you 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 can't second guess it. You can't think I'm writing for this audience or that audience, you have to write to please yourself. And so yeah, I'm pleased with it, you know, and it's like, and, and for the first time I have a product, you know, I have a book that I can hold in my hand and say, you know, I did this. Yeah. And that's, that's really so cool. aside from the 10 year break, <laughs> once you got it back together, how long did it take you to get it complete and out to somebody? Oh, that's, a, as, as a that, that's right. Well, okay. So, I decided, what year are we in now? We're in 2024, 2024. Not a good judge of this question. 2022, in the summer of 2022, I said, I'm going to finish this book. Oh, that's not long. And so I finished it by, I at that point, I was halfway through the first part, right? Mm -hmm. So I probably had, I don't know, it, uh, I don't even know how to begin it. But anyway, I finished the book. I finished my first complete draft of the book in June of 2023. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that sound long. No. Anyway, yeah, must have been that. And then I and then <laughs> I was trying to then pedal the book and I went through the process that George was talking about, about mm -hmm. sending out query letters and all this stuff. And it was like I Oh, <laughs> none of that, none of that work. And so, you know, doing research about it, you know, you've got self-publishing and you've got this mm. stuff and I don't know how to go about doing that. And um, I started reading about hybrid publishers, right? Where it's kind of like self-publishing, but it's not, they, they, it's doesn't, it doesn't, you, you still have to pay a fee, mm -hmm. but it's really, um, the fee for them, them, them making it into a, a, a real book, you know, doing the, the proofreading and doing um, kind of editing and doing all of that process. You pay them to do that and then they help with the marketing. Oh, that's um, good. Well, it, it was, I, I mean, it's, it's a great idea. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. <laughs> their, proofreading, their proofreading wasn't that good and my proofreading wasn't that good. So I keep, I keep oh. finding errors in the book, you know, oh. stupid Eh, that appear and uh, disappear and things like that. But yeah. um, and they didn't help all that much with marketing. Um, oh. But yeah, that was the route I tried to take. So I, I was not successful in going the traditional route. Um, but for the next book, maybe. Yeah. Maybe he, I said, can. he was saying that usually once you kind of get your foot in the door, it's kind of easier the next time so well, I, i'm I'm, th I'm i'm thinking that but you know at this point i'm still back to to what i'm doing i'm doing it for myself mm -hmm. i'm doing it because I, I this is really a cool story that i'm telling now and and i'm really i'm really enjoying it um one of the things that that's really interesting to me is that for the in the first book I was dealing with characters in crisis, right? Because mm -hmm. this this brother had died, and so all the characters come together over this this event that happened, this death that happened. Mm -hmm. And in this book, it's it's different because it doesn't it doesn't begin with that kind of an event at the beginning. So now we see the characters in the beginning of this book in their everyday life, sort of. And that's a much different. That's a much different way to write, and then weaving in this other 
mystery part of the story and getting that started. So it doesn't start with a big bang, but that evolves over a period of time. So it's 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 just a different it's a different way of approaching the story. And I'm really enjoying telling the story that way. That's good. That would like be a pace. I was yeah. just gonna it sounds like a pace is what I was yeah. It it is. Yeah, you're right. It is. And I, I honestly at this point I was um, I, I'm not sure that it's working totally yet. Uh, so once I get finished with the first section, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to um, take a look at it and maybe have a couple people read it to see mm -hmm. whether or not I'm, I'm doing what I'm, I think I'm doing yeah, and whether it works well or not. So. Well, it was one thing he talked about with having a uh, local Absolutely. writing. Absolutely. That stuff. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's, a, that's critical. I had never thought of really. Mm. That's really critical because you, other, otherwise you're just talking to yourself. Right. <laughs> like, I do that all the time. Yeah. I know, real, really, and 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 see where it's gotten you, really. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Alone in a room talking into a <laughs> talking to yourself. No, <laughs> talking to us. You know, looks at me and goes, uh -huh, You are uh, alone. <laughs> she agrees with me. <laughs> So was it, are you originally from the South before? You no, I, no. My, my, like I said, my dad was 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 born there. I lived here, and so oh. I was born here. But we used to take trips to Lake Charles, and so Lake Charles was always kind of this magic place for me that we would go to, and it was so cool. You know, we would go fishing and crabbing, and we'd meet these really cool relatives, and we'd sit up. Yeah. Back porch swing, and they'd all have coffee and tell stories, and it was really this magic place. And so, you know, I'm I, I'm going to have a real interesting experience because in two weeks I'm going to Lake Charles, and oh, nice. I'm going to do uh, several events around the book in Lake Charles, and it's it's um it's going to be fun because oh yeah, it uh, yeah it'll be fun. <laughs> Because I have a lot of relatives there, I have a lot of cousins that are there, and my son and I were there this last summer. Um, I was going to ask if you traveled there for any of the writing of the book. For no, I didn't. Not for any of the writing of the book. For I've I've done I've done a lot of of um, research uh, going to New Orleans and to Lake Charles for the for the second book. Um, but the first book was really just googling stuff. Mm -hmm. And and you know finding out information about the about the about the city because it's set it's set there and I wanted to, I wanted it to be authentic set yeah. setting theirs right so I wanted to talk about things that were actually present you know so yeah it was fun I'm I'm almost a northerner I mean southerner and uh, I, to me from what parts of the book i read you nailed the southern history the southern feeling grit to it so well, i i really i really hope i really hope so i mean i i made i made certain des decisions like most of the characters in the book are have a french heritage um because that's that's kind of the way it is in that in that portion of louisiana right in the mm -hmm. southern part the cajun part and there's a lot of there's 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 so much of that there and so um when it comes time to to give character names i went back to ancestry.com i went back into my family tree and i i pulled i pulled names you know i would take a surname from here and place it with this first name from this other person and put it here and and that was really kind of cool you know because it, it's like so many of the characters um, are meaningful to me, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, and, and you find out some really interesting things. Like I, I'm, I, I am, I'm actually related. Jean Lafitte is actually an uncle of mine. Oh wow! His sister is my fourth, fifth, my fifth great grandmother on my mother's side. That's all the family. Wow, it's it? <laughs> you know, it's kind of just cool. It's just like yeah, it is. Did you did you do a lot of the um oh what is it uh ancestry.com? Is that one of the sites? Yeah. 
That's that's what my you life know, and, is. And not not that everything on Ancestry.com is true. You know, you don't yeah. know. I mean, you don't know. It, but it's like, okay, I'll go with that. Yeah. You know, so because after all, I'm writing fiction. I'm not writing facts. So. Yeah. That's true. That's true. But that you do true. you do put a historical little. <sighs> I, I do, and, and that's and and but, but some of it's made up. Move them way. together pretty well, yeah. you know. And so it's like some of the Jean Lafitte stuff is is true. Some of this, and some of it's not, right? Mm -hmm. But well, that's um, what what. But it was fun. It, it was, tales, it was, you know, it, it was really it was really neat to exactly to, to kind of create that world. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, yeah. it was good. And in a pirate's life, we really never know what's true. What's yeah, wrong. And so it's like, <laughs> I was funny. I, I was I was writing it, and I was in the second section, and I, I sent it to somebody to read, and but and and she she liked really the first the first section a lot, and 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 she was liking the second section, and then she said, you know, she looked up Jean Lafitte, and it was like. Well, he wasn't a very nice man. <laughs> he was a pirate. <laughs> well, he's a pirate for crying out loud. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I realized I really had to go in and and kind of I, I inserted a, a part in there where where was the the daughter of one of the brothers, Jenny, where she comes to that realization, you know that that yeah. we're talking about Jean Lafitte, but he was he was this, he was kind of a despicable. Person, yeah, actually, he was a you know, cad as being <laughs> kind of a heroic, and I don't know, I don't know how much people really think about Jean Lafitte, but you know, historically, the whole um, uh, Battle of New Orleans, War of 1812, where he's he's kind of a, had a heroic figure in that yeah. situation. You know, we kind of think about him historically as that, as opposed to a, a pirate, you know, it's like he's kind of a Rhett Butler type. Well, you know what, and and but part, part of the problem is that is that uh, I kind of wrote him that way, and yeah, and, you know, uh, <laughs> so yeah, he's kind, of, kind of a figment of my imagination, really. There so you it's, go. <laughs> it's like, well, as as you said, at the end of the day, you have to be happy with it. So I do. Like, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Like I said, I, from, like I said, what little bit I've gotten into it, you nailed the southern, the grittiness, and um, I mean, mosquito bites weren't there, but uh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that's true. and and food. I'm telling you, I mean, yeah. I I really I I went I I did a lot about food. I did because it's it's one of my. One of my the great memories of going to Lake Charles was eating. <laughs> yes, and they talk about food all the time. It's Where like we spend most of our time. It's, it's like <laughs> only conversation you have with anybody, you know, mm -hmm. within ten minutes, it's going to go to food. Yeah, it's, it's just going to, and it's like well, it's a way mm -hmm. of life. It's, it it is. the kitchen table was like it is. It absolutely <laughs> and and. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. So, so much, so much of 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 my well, not not so much, I guess. But I I write a lot in the kitchen, mm -hmm. right? With the characters in the kitchen because that's where, that's where the the kitchen and the back porch, on the swing. You know, that's those are yeah. my my greatest memories of 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 being a kid, and and being there. You know, because that's where the adults hung out. You mm -hmm. know. And if you eat sweet tea, yeah, you have you the know, sweet. Like, that's it. <laughs> we sat on the front. We sat on the front porch because we wave at everybody that <laughs> everybody just throw by, throw their hands my, up, and then you go throw, my, my, you throw their hand up at you. And <laughs> that's right. You either had a swing or a glider. That's right. Oh God, I forgot the glider, the, yeah. swing on the back porch. My grandfather, um, when I was little, my grandfather uh, worked for the parish, the county, right? They call them parishes in, in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And he was the um, the the um, deputy tax collector is what he was. Cool. And and so um, we used to go and visit him at the city hall because that's where his office was. But that's not what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Every morning when he would get up, he would be the first one up, and he would he would go in and he would make a pot of coffee, French drip, you know, where you had poured yeah. the water over mm-hmm. the grounds oh, and, yeah. and, and he would, he would come, my, my brother and I were sharing a um, uh, sofa bed that was in the living room yeah. and he would come and he would wake us up and we would, the three of us would go out in the back porch, sit mm-hmm. on the swing and he would make coffee au lait for us. Oh, you know? yum. Yeah. And th- that was such a, that was such a great, a great memory. And it was that kind of, it was that kind of a feel that, that I really wanted to, mm. I really wanted to get in the book. I really wanted yeah. to that 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 feel of of what of what the South kind of meant to me. Yeah. And um, I think I was I was successful for me anyway. I I like that part of it a lot. Um, it sounds yeah. good. Sounds great. Yeah. I haven't read it yet. Just well, I hope you do. And if you do, it, write, I, write a review, please. It's like, I would love to. I, I will. Um, I just got a new review today. I, like I hadn't had one for like six months, and one oh appeared gosh, on this yeah. today. It was like oh, okay, cool. Yeah, my uh, grandfather uh, grew up in Mississippi, in uh, Bogachita. I don't know if you know where that is, but <laughs> um, his uh, his sister, my great aunt, married uh, a man who is Cajun, and I just love to go on there and hear and spend time with them and hear him talk. I just love the way he it's spoke. It's <laughs> and, uh, fun. It, it is. Oh, I love it to is. hear him it's talk. A, it's a, yeah. No. Right. He was you know, they, 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 talk about, they talk about the South, north of the I-10 and south of the I-10. Yeah. You know, and and it's, it, really, it, it really is true that there is re- a real difference, particularly in Louisiana. I don't know that much about Mississippi. But in Louisiana, yeah. there's such a difference because south of the I-10 is really Cajun country, right? Yeah. And north of the I-10 is just kind of typical south. You know, so yeah. there's not that much different between Georgia and Alabama. And, and That's true. But south of the I-10 is, is where you really get a lot of the, the textual real the feeling yeah. of the real neat stuff, I think. Yeah. My, uh, no, my grandfather. My great grandfather, he lived in Baton Rouge with his second wife, and they were. I never did. I don't know. I remember visiting visiting them there, but I'm sure we did. I just don't remember it. And we used but, to. We used yeah. to come to Knoxville from. I, I, I'm sure you heard me say I grew up in the Northern Virginia DC yeah. area, and Knoxville was the South for me. Yeah, so, and then you know we go to the lake and see the mountains and stuff like that. So, and I think that's kind of like what memory it brought back to me was that of childhood and that of remembering the things of the South and you know, like well, Dina's Knoxville South. is the South too. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> it was even much more as a, as a youngster to me because well, my high school spoke thirteen different languages. So yeah, good. Well, that's, that's, came, absolutely. that's true. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. It was so it was nice, and even though we had not far away from DC, we had mountains and things, you know, the uh, Front Royal, the Lorraine Mountains, that that stuff. Tennessee was always like a getaway, and so that's what the the book brought me to, right? No, but the food is also kind of good too. So, (laughs) yeah, biscuits and gravy. It is. That's like I, I went on a job interview down in uh oh gosh, it was Louisiana. Where was it? It was way down there. Uh it was south of I-10. And I remember they had uh crawfish on everything. I had crawfish oh, on oh man. <laughs> crawfish. You know, oh, absolutely. I a place this is last summer. Uh, when my son and I were in New Orleans, um, a cousin of mine who lives in Baton Rouge. They they came. She and her husband came and, and met us in New Orleans and spent the night. And they, we they they took us to a Mexican restaurant, 
Mexican. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I, I had I had crawfish enchiladas. Oh wow! And it well, was absolutely different. fabulous. I bet it was. Yeah. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm having I'm having a, when I go to Lake Charles in three weeks. I'm I'm having a a, a book signing at mm -hmm. a place called Tia Juanita's Fish Camp, and it's a it's Tia Juanita's. A, that's cool. Tia Juanita's Fish Camp, <laughs> and it's it. a Mexican Cajun fusion restaurant. Nice. That really it's it's really supposed to be a real great restaurant, a real cool place. Wow, I bet it well, would be. As a matter of fact, I, I have a I have a story. Can I tell a story? I don't know how much time we have. Uh, well, I decided I was going to go to Lake Charles this 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 spring because every year, the first two weeks in May, they have this pirate festival um, called uh, Contraband Days, and I thought, well, you know what? I should really I should really go. I should really take advantage of this. You know, kind of duh. I guess. And so I went, okay, yeah, I, I'm going to do that. You know, so I made reservations at this place and I made, you know, plane and they, they, they're not having it this year. Oh, no. Yeah. They... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, they, 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 they didn't have it during COVID, of course. And coming back from oh, COVID, yeah. it was really been hard for them to kind of get, get get traction. And so they decided not to have it. So I'm sitting here and I'm going, well, okay, I have this non-refundable hotel and non-refundable flight. So I'm going to Lake Charles, which is okay yeah. because, you know, I get to meet family and I get to kind of hang out and eat food and all mm -hmm. that stuff. And I didn't know, I didn't know <laughs> what to do until I, you know, I realized part of, part of what I'd done, I, I have a um, uh, Facebook page. Mm -hmm. That's Charlie Roger Facebook page. And one of the things that I did was the page joined pirate groups. There's all these pirate groups in the country, right? Yeah. And so I I I joined a lot of groups. And so I, I sent out, I, I did a I, I posted in there that I was going to go to this thing and they're not having it this year. If anybody has any ideas, let me know. And uh, I got a, a you know a message back from somebody, this this, this woman. Who is runs this pirate group uh, mm -hmm. right outside of Lake Charles? Sulphur is where she lives, and she said she she used to run the the festival in the past oh. before COVID. She she ran it, and mm -hmm. so she said, "If you want, I I can see what I can do to set stuff up." So she's the one who organized this book signing at Tijuana. So I'm going to have pirates there, and that's going to be oh. this cool thing. How fun! It really is it's amazing. That's all. That's please, please pick. I want to. I want to see that. That's gonna be cool. Yeah, it take is. some pictures and post them on yeah, your Facebook page. Absolutely, it's really gonna be cool. <laughs> really, yeah, and then I, I, I'm also gonna. I'm gonna talk at the. I'm gonna have a, a thing at the local library, there, the downtown Lake Charles. I'm gonna be there, and I don't know what I'm because again, I have to pretend like I'm a real author. And yeah, you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my job, Tom. Okay, you know, I'll do. Yeah. You know. An hour and a half on the art of the novel, you know. That's kind of <laughs> act like just talk like you have here. You you did good. You no, know, we're fine. Well. By the way, I have to say this. Sure. I know you don't think, Dina, that that you have you have issues with Stephen King. I think Stephen King is 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 an amazing writer, and it's it's his it's his book that you guys talked about on writing. It's an absolutely fabulous book. Uh -huh. And what's so interesting to me about this book is that you get this insight into Stephen King about, because it is, it's so easy to dismiss a writer like Stephen King as not being an author, right? <laughs> it's like, no, no, I love, I love author. his writing. You I know, just don't like, I just no, don't like. I know that's what you said. That, yeah, right. yeah. I understand that. And, and, but it, it's like he, he understands the craft of writing so well. Um, it really, it really is wonderful. It's, it's wonderful. Look, I really love reading his stuff. I don't know if yeah. you've ever read it. Oh yes, it. I that yes. to me is is one of one of his best books. The way he writes uh, kids mm -hmm. is just amazing to me. He really is really fabulous. Yeah, he is really very. He is fabulous. A fabulous writer, like I said, and, and it's, it's just, I think. 
the things I think the reason I don't care for him much is he's just cranky and mean on Twitter. <laughs> he is. Well, he's, he's an old so guy crazy. now. He's yeah, he is. He is just so cranky. And, and, like, and also, you know, <laughs> he is. he's been through stuff. You know, you you, you read what he, he, he talks about this. I think he talks about this in On Writing. When he's talking about his his the time that he spent when he was, you know, Alcohol and drugs, and oh well, and, and I, didn't, saying, I didn't know alcohol. But <laughs> saying that Maybe. he doesn't, he doesn't even remember writing Cujo. Really? Like, oh man, Cujo, Maybe. I think is really a cool. Book. <laughs> Cujo is <laughs> you know, the, to write to write Cujo uh, and not remember that you wrote it. It's, yeah, it's amazing to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I gotta give him a little break then. I guess he, he had a hard time. <laughs> Well, he had that accident too, where he was hit by the car, and oh, oh yeah. man, he was paralyzed. Or uh, yeah, it was weird. Yeah, he, he came was. back from that, so that's why he's cranky. I think. That's, that's yeah, you're right. <laughs> he's, yeah, you're right. He's, he's a hateful <laughs> man, though. <laughs> you know, one of the things I think about is I'm more into uh, thinking about like athletes and stuff, and sometimes I wish. Get on the field, do your thing. Shut up! I don't care. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's kind of the way I think about right, it. Right, Sometimes absolutely. it's great to see them play, but then when they come off of there and they open their mouth, and you realize, then you go right. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah you wouldn't right. think somebody would just like say, "He's just so that author. He's just so mean. Or he just <laughs> shut up and write." <laughs> yeah. <That's> right. Uh, <laughs> let's see. see. Listening to get yeah. you to cry. If you want to come on debate, you Dina, I would love that. So Dude. I might actually get three of you, Stephen King. So. Hell no, just no. <laughs> Maybe four viewers, tops. So <laughs> no. Well. One of the things that you heard me ask, George, uh, we're you know, we wouldn't be the pair or normal guys and gals if we didn't ask, do you have any type of paranormal stories? Well, it's hard, I don't really, except except for this. And I, you know, he he talked about he talked about his grandfather. Mm -hmm. I, I have I have two stories that I can tell that really have to do with my grandmother and grandfather, although. They're not exactly paranormal. When I used to spend the night, you know, you, you mm -hmm. go, they, they, they lived in Los Angeles and there would be occasionally where I would go and stay with them for a while, right? And I would go into this, they had a, a spare bedroom and I, that's where I would sleep. Well, it was like, <laughs> like 10 years after that happened, I was talking to my uncle and he said, well, that's the haunted room. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's the because he said, you know, that he had experiences in that room where he woke up in the middle of the night and saw this figure standing at the foot of the bed. And, you know, he'd had the covers ripped from him. And I went, well, that's where Grandma put me. Oh, <laughs> I spent the night in that room. <laughs> it kind of put my relationship with Grandma on a totally different <laughs> realm at that point. But the other story, the other story is this. <laughs> it's a little bit, it's a well, sadder, right? Because it was it was when my grandfather died, and at the time they were living out in the desert, and so we went. My mother and father and I and and uncle drove uh, to to my grandmother, and we picked her up and we brought her back home with us because this is where the funeral was going to be, and so we get back to the house. And it's in the middle of the night, and all of a sudden, <laughs> there's this wailing woo, woo, woo sound coming. And I like, wake up to this. It's like, what the heck is going on here? And it was my grandmother who was in the room next door <laughs> to me. Oh. And she was having this nightmare. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> she was like this wailing, and it was like, okay, well, that's it. Those are my two. <laughs> You just thought that was going to get you. I did. I just thought, well, this is it. Well, grandma's <laughs> Remembered you from the haunted room. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to say, oh, say are you sure you were a good child? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hmm. Well, let's see now. Wow. 
<laughs> That's funny. So when does your book tour of uh, Louisiana? I'm going, I'm going to be there. I'm 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 going on the um, the eighth of uh, May, and so I'm I'm doing I'm doing Tijuanitas uh, on the ninth, and I'm doing the um, library on the tenth, the afternoon of the tenth, and then I've got the rest of the week can that I I don't have anything yet, but I could just hang out and eat with cousins. So you should do that. I might do that. <laughs> it should. Well, it's a beautiful area too. So yeah, it is. Just don't go take, get any dips with the alligators down there. No, no, yeah. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> a, do they have the problems there like they do in Florida with the snakes, the big, huge snakes? I, you know what? I'm, I'm sure out in the bayou they do. But I, I, well, I haven't spent that much time in there, but I've seen no snakes. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope you keep it that way. Now, the only reason I thought of that is uh, I saw a video where um, a guy went out into the Florida Everglades, and he was hunting these snakes. And I was, I was like, I didn't realize they got that big. Um, you know, <laughs> and, the- and these are called crazy people. But <laughs> my, well, my my dad, my dad would talk about water moccasins, um, out in the. You know when he would be out fishing in the in the bayou and the lakes and the so yeah. Well, I mean, hopefully there, there are anything. definitely critters that you have to be careful of. Oh yeah, I did Bigfoot down there. So never know. Never know. Never know. Never know. Never know. I think down there it might be swamp ape. It might um, be swamp thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I never got around to ask you. Are you a uh, comic book aficionado? I'm really, I'm not, but my son is, and he's kind of gotten me involved in comic books and stuff. So. Okay. <laughs> so, you sure he's not dragging you down a, a bad uh, road here? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. You know, his well, his no, his, where grandpa, his, grandma left you. So. That's yeah, right. she hung me out to dry. She, <laughs> he's, he's, he's really into um, uh, superheroes, and oh. and and honestly, we're 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 talking about a young man who is now a freshman in college, and he, he's still he still likes to dress up like Spider Man with his friends or Batman, and. Um, you know he he he's he's majoring in film, and okay. he, he loves to make he, he loves to make um uh, he's really into Legos loves Legos he makes he makes stop action movies with Lego figures and well, that's a, that's, that's, a talent now. that's I'm kind sorry? of cool. it it is. Is. that's a it talent he's he's a, really, he's, a, like he's a very talented young man yeah I have to say that he really is my hmm. daughter did that when she was like. Uh, 10 or 11. <laughs> yeah, <we're really> <laughs> oh, Lord. So, but what, what does he create? Legos, with, but... Excuse me? What does he create with the Legos to make the stop action? I, I've never heard of this. That's kind of well, cool. It, it is. I mean, he, he well, he has figures. So he, he makes, yeah. like, he must have, he must have, he must have a hundred Lego figures and and sets, right? We have yeah. he's got this whole town of Lego Legolopolis, you know. It's like this; it's huge. Uh, where he has all different kinds of things, and he's he squeezes in, you know. There's parts of Hogwarts that are in there, and parts of you know, and yeah. It's 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 amazing what 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 he does, and he takes he takes the figures then and creates these stories. Um, using the the small Lego figures, stop That's action, cool. and it's it's you know he has sets and it, it's really it's amazing. He he's he started doing this. He's had his own uh, Lego channel from the time like he was ten years old, mm-hmm. uh, maybe oh, wow. earlier than that actually. That's cool. I'm I'm, I'd like time. to see that. I, I really would. i um, let's see. It's um, it's Wait, um, um, was... shut up, Lloyd. He's trying to think. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of what his what his YouTube channel is. It's uh, Plushco Boss. What is it? Plushco Boss. Plushco Boss. Plush, no, see that's the plushies. He's he that's when he does. That's when he does. Um, oh, plushies. Yeah. Stop action with plushies. Yes, plushies. 
That's what um, that's what my daughter did too. <laughs> they well, well that's, where they, uh, that's where that that's where he that's where he started. Um, yeah, that's what she did. Yeah, actually, with their well, blushes. Yeah, yeah it's, it's 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 really pretty cool. It is. Of course, I'll, she. I'll, I'll check this out. She didn't stay in the arts, but I mean, she still oh, does. Funny. Art, but... he, he went. He went to he. <laughs> He enrolled at the um, at Santa Cruz, um, mm -hmm. the University of California in Santa Cruz, as a astrophysics major. Oh, wow! And um, a change. He's decided yeah. to change into f a film. Yeah. Okay. He's still really interested in astrophysics, but mm -hmm. you know, it's like yeah. that's that's a tough yeah. subject. So it is a tough subject. Now, when you were in Hollywood, uh, did you what, any major motion pictures you were involved in, or I don't? Well, you may not know of any of them. I don't know if you know the Howling. The Howling. Mm -hmm. I did the Howling. Um, I remember the Howling. I did uh, Escape from New York. Yep. Picture that I did. Okay. Um, I did uh, Chuck Norris picture called An Eye for an Eye. Mm -hmm. Really a nice little picture. I don't remember that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's in Georgia. Uh, what is it? Excuse me. What was oh, the last what? one? The night the lights went on in Georgia. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. That. Seen that? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It was fun. I enjoyed that a lot. You quite. Until I didn't, and then. Yeah. Well, it's like that with any job. I mean, it is. I I had a my my first real boss in in, in Hollywood said to me one time. He said, "You know, this is a great profession." And as long as you're having fun, it's a great place to work. He said, when you stop having fun, you need to get out. And that's what happened. I stopped having fun and I got out. Yeah. Good. It's good advice for anything. I mean, it, it really is. is. Yeah, absolutely. It is. Yeah. So, All right. Well, Tom, we have kept you longer because of the computer glitch and I don't know, the matrix sucked up part of my internet feed or something. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> While we were doing this, I heard thunder, and it just occurred to me. Apparently, the power blinked at the same time. So oh, must be it. Storm. So yeah. So, so I can't exactly blame AT and T if they can't no. have the pictures. So. No, well, you can. I would. They yeah. they deserve. I still well, blame Xfinity. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, Tom, uh, when you get the second book, I want to have you back. Okay, I'd love to come back. Uh, then you can say, hey. You know, now you're accomplished podcast. Uh, now I am accomplished podcast, and I probably by that time I'll have nine reviews. And um, <laughs> yes, or, or maybe ten. So, <laughs> yes, you know, I will. She's the reader, so yes, I'm, I'm more the comic book guy. But uh, I do try and read some, not as much as I should. But um, yeah, I definitely want to have you back. Okay. I'm definitely with the food, so I'm going to be checking out your oh, uh, page. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as you said that, talking about putting the two together, I remembered eating at a place down. I think it was, it was a little uh, Florida town, and they made uh, alligator tacos. Oh, um, alligator tacos! I when at first I thought, was this horrible? Yeah, I don't like you know, the biggest problem I have with alligator Fishy. is that it's green. That's that's it the biggest problem I have with, with that. It's like if it wasn't green, I I, I don't think I'd. I think it would be okay. And frog legs, I feel the same way. I, I don't know. Yeah. I just can't do it. Yeah. Alligator is <laughs> like green chicken. It, it is. And it, it, tastes it tastes like slightly fish. fishy, slightly yeah. fishy, but it's green like chicken that tastes like fish. fish. It's disgusting. The frog legs, are, uh, <laughs> the alligator, I can't. There's, I love, uh, oh man, there's another place down in Florida. You got me going about food. Um, go down into Florida and they do, uh, it's a special wings they make there, just like their brand of buffalo wings and gator bites. And they fry them together and they serve them really? with your sauce. And you get a basket of wings and gator nuggets. And yeah. Gator nuggets? That it's sounds, in the, the South you can fry anything. Edible. Well, you know, for the first time, I had turtle soup. Did you like it? In, oh, it was. Fabulous! Really, I've never had. Oh, um, I was a Commander's Palace in New Orleans. Their mm. turtle soup—it was the most amazing thing, almost that I've ever eaten. I was—I was, was, I was shocked at how good it was. Hmm. That something fishy? called turtle soup could be so good. 
Oh, did it taste fishy at all? No. Really? No, not at all. It, it had this it had a wonderful, wonderful taste. Mm. Just incredible. It was so right. I, I, I say, you know, you should you should definitely field trip New Orleans Commander's Palace turtle I soup. I have to do that sometimes. And tell them Tom sent you. I will. I was like, oh, you're, gonna be, you're gonna be world famous by then. So that's right. <laughs> All right, Tom. Have a good evening. Thank you. I will. For you too. Thank you for having me. So even Thank you for having me. We are great. glad yeah. to have you. Um, I had a great time. I me really too. did. And I can't Thank wait to finish the book. So, Tom, uh, tell your son he needs to come on and do our show too. How about that? Okay, I will. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yes, yeah. I will. Have a good night. Tell me. Okay. No, one guy didn't know Bye. what the heck it was. <laughs> Talk to you soon, Tom. <laughs> okay. Bye. 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 That was great. It, I was freaked out about the storm, or not the storm, the internet, but it was oh, a storm. Yeah, I guess. But, it was. Yeah, I didn't know it was supposed to storm, but I've been kind of. I didn't. I didn't even hear any lightning here. <laughs> You're a couple miles away from me. Yeah, so. no kid. <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> but I'm glad to know that it wasn't something else because I was yeah. freaking out. I was like. Ah. And I noticed that there was still some popping occasionally, but not a little bit, but not near as much. No, no. And we've ran now. We've ran. A, we're two eleven over, or two two eleven. So we've went well past where it would normally start. So yeah. And tomorrow I get some other part that my son ordered that makes me go a thousand times faster. So I go from one G to two G. That's good. So. It's supposed to even be getting better. In fact, it's probably going to be so well. My son told me you'll probably have to upgrade your computer soon. I'm like, I just bought the thing. (laughs) (laughs) Is what it is. Uh, Dina, you got anything coming up in the near future? Misfits this Saturday. This right, and we're talking about phobias. Are we? Yeah, I think that's what she wrote up. Me. No, uh, uh, hey, Cheyenne, I sure. anything. we were talking about phobias, about what your biggest phobia is. We so, already had that show. Well, yeah, but I think she's found some like weird phobias. So yeah, we, we haven't seen anything on it. Where, where was it at in the uh, chat? Yeah, yeah, it was in the chat. Uh, let's see. So next week we have a shaman, the self proclaimed crazy jamon the shaman and then after that we have uh oh finally uh joseph sewell i wondered what it was coming up on uh him because i've been reading his book some uh joseph is going to be the second guest a decorated uh, combat veteran so it's going to be an interesting combination a shaman and a combat veteran so and then Friday, uh, this Friday, tomorrow, no, day after tomorrow. I don't even know what day of the week it is. Um, <laughs> we have the Green and Guardian gang. We have an author that is a retired Chicago PD investigator, now turned crime novelist. So I'm looking forward to that as well. So good. Tune in for that. You, well, you get the his name is Mike Hammond. Is that correct? Let me make sure I'm telling you the right day. Um, you've probably, you might have read some of his book because I know you like that type of stuff. I think it's Mike Hammond. Uh, yes, Mike Hammond. So, yeah. So, uh, it's it'll be a good show. And then we're back around to, uh, after that, the Paranormal Guys next week. And then Misfits. Sports show Monday. Hmm? Yeah, the Sports Show Monday. Oh, yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, Jeff would be messaging me, asking me why I didn't mention it. Yes. Uh, we have the Lip Men on the UFO, um, the second episode uh, coming up next Monday night. So, which is kind of interesting because I know about football, but I didn't know about the UFL. I mean, I knew about them, but I didn't know. They have some different rules. So, I actually get some that are kind of like the big boys ought to adopt that. Make the game much more interesting. So, mm-hmm. so it's kind of like a cross between, um, I don't want to say minor league football and the NCAA, but 
Yeah, it's us. Well, I'm still an SEC guy, you know. So yeah. Yeah. It's it's yeah. hard to get them from me. Yeah, it's hard to. It's difficult to move away from it. I think. Yeah. Well, once you've watched, well, once you've watched the college sports for so long, so yeah. it's really, it's even jaded me on NFL. Really, what I, I did used to have more favorite teams in the NFL now because of watching college sports more I have favorite players more so so mm-hmm. unless they go to the Cowboys and then I just hate them so they <laughs> did to me <laughs> unless they go play for the Cowboys and they're dead to me so oh gosh you're crazy <laughs> not a Dallas Cowboys fan ladies and gentlemen we will see you again next week same time same place Good night. Good night.